So I thought, while we're here, and you've been with here, you know, in Bali for a month, I thought, oh, out of all the conversations we've had, you know, just chatting with each other, I thought an interesting one for us to chat about would be cultivation, just as a, a wider concept. More general? Yeah, you know, like, uh, you're known as a Tai Chi practitioner teacher more than anything else yeah i would guess although I pe people know you do meditation as well i think primarily you're known in the tai chi world aren't you i think myself more in the qigong world than anything else and those two practices can be standalone arts that people do just for the sake of doing them yeah in obviously. and of themselves right yeah yeah but there's a whole other side to it isn't it that some people use those practices i would say myself and you included in that that uh it's a tool for something different. Well, that makes it worth worth it in the long run, I'd say. Yeah, okay, why? Tell us about that. Well, if something's just in and of itself, uh, it might be fun and entertaining, then you die. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's it's just kind of goes final. nowhere, ultimately. Right? So is that, is that how you view the sort of... Um, the meaning of cultivation then be something that is bigger than your life or bigger than your death? Yeah, I think cultivation means to cultivate towards and to embody the divine. Okay. Yeah. And what's the, what is the, these are loaded questions because I, I already know your answer and I guess I, I, I know my view on it as well. But what is, uh, why is connection to the divine bigger than life or bigger than death? In your book, I'd say it's the source of both. Okay, so if it's the source of both, it has to be. Well, maybe, I guess, bigger is one way to phrase okay. it. I just think it's the purpose of existence. Mm. So, do you think these arts? This this is the age old question, isn't it? And I think it's probably you no. Know, this conflict that goes on, or whether Tai Chi is a cultivation thing or a. I don't even want to say martial arts. I don't even have the same definition of martial art as other people because martial arts to me means a form of cultivation. Mm -hmm. Whereas I guess when other people hear martial art, they just hear martial. Combat. Combat. Yeah, yeah. that's what they hear. So using that yeah. definition, do you think that arts like, I guess yeah. some of them were developed for combat, weren't they? But arts like Tai Chi, were they developed for combat primarily, in your opinion? Well, if the great immortal, the most highly achieved person in Chinese history, let's say, yes, created it, and it's his masterpiece. I'd say no, it's Even not. Chan Sung Fong. Yeah, okay. of course, it's not just for punching and kicking. I mean, that would be. That's what he wanted to give to the world after being a supreme immortal. I, I, I don't think so. It does seem strange to me often that uh, these sort of grand masters, which even if you look at the stereotype of a grand master, sort of everything from kung fu movies which i know is not the greatest source for accuracy but still based on something right all the myths come from reality <laughs> completely you yeah. know and all of the the stories and the and what even when you're young you know and I, and i associated the idea of a grand master that stereotype didn't strike me as someone that would get to their deathbed and then write a book on how to you know like how to kill or no. leave something behind on no. on combat right of course because it's the lowest one of the lowest aspects of humanity, right? Yeah. I would argue that someone couldn't, uh, shouldn't say it, I argue someone who shouldn't really be considered a master if they're still obsessed with that side of the training, no matter how good they are at it. I'd agree totally. I mean, to me, a master is someone that's mastered themselves. Hmm. And then if you're still driven by such lower forces, then obviously you haven't, right? It's normal when you're young and you're full of testosterone and you're Yes. amped up to want to punch on and stuff it's natural and normal and that's what you do when you're growing up and maybe you find a way to do that that's you know from an old tradition yes but you move on if you're normal and you grow up and if there's any spiritual inclination or draw within then it's going to pull you away from that kind of thing naturally <laughs> if, it, if it's based on testosterone it makes me laugh because it makes me wonder if the people that uh, still get caught up in that kind of side of it are either adding more testosterone in their system might be one way from a sort of chemical perspective or maybe there's almost like a you know when something's taken away from you how do you describe that yeah. not a rebellion like yeah, yeah. what do you call it it's like an insecurity there's yeah, a deficiency yeah. so an they're making up for it an existential insecurity isn't it <laughs> it's like i've lost my testosterone so i must test extremely macho shout louder it. yeah i'd say okay. it's that one <laughs> <laughs> if so that's a really silly reason 
I guess somebody could live in a violent area, so it's possible for them to become obsessed on that Guns. level. Guns. <laughs> or, or the most spiritual thing you could possibly do, move. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I always laugh, why don't you move? Yeah, I know. Usually when people complain, I have one word to say, move. <laughs> Sometimes the, uh, the most obvious solution gets overlooked, I think. Yeah. And people say, I can't move, it's not true. I moved when I was absolutely broke. I'm yep. sure you did too. Yep. You can, it's only because there's other attachments and other things that people prioritize. That's why they don't move. That's it. Yeah, sure. If Which you I, want to change, I, you change. I understand. If you've had kids young or something sure. like that, I get it. Move with the kids. Move. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's the other option, isn't it? But yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. I guess for a lot of people, but... The life gets in the way. I mean, it's, it's not fair to say mm. it's always easy. Life, life gets in the way. But, I, you know, if you're in a violent area, normally you can move. Well, that kind of brings us back to cultivation, isn't it? Isn't it that life gets in the way is kind of one of the points of cultivation? It's one of, it's like it always, it's life always going to get in the way. Life definitely gets in the way of cultivation. And if you cultivate correctly, you can make life, yeah. like the poison become the medicine. It doesn't have to always be in the way. Well, as you know, you've been here a month and you've seen some ups and downs in my life over this last sure. month. And that's how it goes. <laughs> that's the nature of it. But it's... Uh, if you cultivate properly, it won't mess you around, though, will it? No. No. You get freedom from it. At least I'd say yeah. that's a basic level, not a high achievement. Like one of the early fruits of cultivation is that you're just cool about the ups and downs of life. Isn't it the worldly expression of calm abiding, essentially? In yeah, a way? like the, lo the, the, the macro... Version? Yeah, version of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think with Tai Chi, this is my theory that uh, I don't know if you agree or not as well. I always think Tai Chi is like a, if you are in talking about combat, I think Tai Chi is a terrible art to begin with. And when I've given that view, people haven't generally liked it very much because they like what they do to be very complete. It's true though. I mean, uh, even the Yang family kids yes. did external training when they were young. Yeah. I mean, starting with single whip, diagonal flying, roll back, or even standing postures, or swing arms, or whatever you're doing, or push hands. It's not a good start point. It almost feels to me like the assumption is you can already punch and kick. And yeah, you have to be able to, you know, strike and move and yes. hurt and get hurt, basically. Yeah. That's the basic, most basic fundamental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it takes time. You've got to spend some years doing that, for sure. And that's what I always thought about Tai Chi, was it feels like an art that somebody would have created if they'd already been in martial arts for a long time. Like if you'd fought from a kid and you'd already yeah. boxed and wrestled and grappled and probably picked up injuries mm -hmm. and then also, as you say, your testosterone went down and then maybe some found something inside yourself, hang on, that's different, and that set you off on a slightly more internal or spiritual path. Like the fruits of the labor of somebody who'd done that process almost feels like Tai Chi, you know, like it's what somebody would create if they hit a really high level in their practice. Yeah, well, I think it's somebody that had a really high level of martial arts and inner work, right? Yeah. But yeah. at the more practical level for everyone else, uh, if, you, if you have fear, you can't do Tai Chi. You can't apply Tai Chi. Okay, yeah, right? yep, sure. So if you're not used to punching and kicking and getting punched and kicked yes. and hurting and getting hurt, you're going to have fear yep. for most people. Yes. So even if the practicality of punching and kicking and moving is not needed, at least getting past fear is needed. Yeah. At least that. Right. It puts it in an interesting place as well, because then the counter-argument for something like Tai Chi was could somebody use it for cultivation if they hadn't, you know, if, it, if say, I don't want to use it for combat, mm -hmm. I don't want to use it for any violence, no interest in getting in a ring or fighting someone, mm -hmm. I only want to use it for cultivation. Mm -hmm. Can you? Well, can you overcome fear using it as a tool? Not without some martial experimentation, I don't think. But do, do it, mm. I don't think that means you have to have, you know, really scrapped a lot when you were younger or anything. But you need to work with forces. There's a degree definitely. of discomfort must be present in the training. Yeah, and externally yeah. applied. Yeah. Stress has to come. Yeah, which can, some people can transmute sort of a, the stress from standing practices and things into that kind of thing as well. That's part of it, but it's not yeah. the same as an, a variable force from the outside. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it needs to be a huge amount. I don't think people need to have death matches or anything. Because, you know, when you push hands, even the lightest force, people already react with fight or flight, right? <laughs> yes. It's yeah. not a, really about amount. It's built into the nervous system. So I think if you can undo that process, that reaction of, of responding like that. The inbuilt touch phobia. Yeah. I think <laughs> that's really it. 
Yeah, sure. That's I mean, my quality I to overcome. <laughs> all, I mean, all martial application is touch. Yeah. That's what it is, right? So, I, I've personally never been someone that's needed every class I go to to be hugely practical no. in a literal sense. What a serious. Completely. Yeah. You know, one of my earlier people that I met, Shen Hung Sun, that I was definitely quite divorced from physical practicality mm -hmm. in many ways, but, but incredible practice. Yeah. Uh, very incredible art. Yeah, and sort of way beyond that level. Yes. Too far for me to understand, sure, actually, when I encountered right it. Right person at the right time and all that. It's, yeah. If the gap's too big, uh, you miss it a lot. There was a couple of teachers like that I remember being with, and I just remember just feeling almost like a pain in my brain. Like, this is too early for me, but I also understand that sometimes if you find an amazing teacher, you need to train with them as much as you can. Yeah, you have to, because there's not many in the world. And also they tend to disappear. Right. Not just death, but they just, the move. thing with... They move. Genius. Yeah, they move. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's always like, they're like fickle geniuses in a way, aren't they? Like all of a sudden, they'll just change their mind or change their life or, oh, I'm going into retreat for 10 years now or... Yeah, the, the winds of destiny good. change and they change yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there were some teachers I was with when I was younger that was too early for me to understand. Mm. But now when I look back on their material, I, I get it. You know, I get it. And part of me wishes I could kind of retrain with them now. Sure. Now I have the knowledge I have. But yeah. I guess it's also useful in a, in a way. You just have to plumb the depths of your memory, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, all this sort of, you know, we are created by our life experience. Mm. And they all are part of what made you who you are. And, drove you forward and stuff like that. Their fault. Yeah, completely. <laughs> it's all them. It's all them. I blame them for the mojito. <laughs> <laughs> I should shift the blame. I tried for a coconut. <laughs> I did try for something healthy, but it didn't work. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, well. So why, why did you... Uh... Why Tai Chi, you mean? Or? No, before that, martial arts, right? Like, tongue like, was oh. cultivation a part of what you wanted at the beginning? Oh, yeah. It was, for me, it was... So I didn't go to prison. That's it. Right. Okay. It was, yeah. I need to straighten up right now. Also, when you're in prison, you're better at looking after yourself. Yeah. It's, it was like entirely wrong motivation in a way. I guess that's kind of right motivation. Yeah, it from, coming, from coming in the wrong pl from the wrong place is what I mean. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because everything was bad, I needed to straighten out. Okay. This is hardcore. This will straighten me out. I'll do that. Uh, yes. Was I concerned with the fighting part? No. Okay. Uh, I could fight anyway. Uh, you know, the ability to do violence is sort of separate to what you learn. I think it's even off, often either in you or not. That's what I mean. It's innate. Right? Yeah. The spirit yeah. of it and all that. Yeah. So I never cared about that kind of thing, uh, about learning something technical. But as soon as I started, I totally loved it. Day one. Obsessed from day one. Okay, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was that. Just drew me in and immediately the cultivation side took over. In what way? Like what? Well, what the fantasy of it. Right, okay. The Shaolin monks, the meditation, this yeah. immediately took over and yeah. like sucked me in completely. So I was straight into all day, every day, trying to do meditation, training Kung Fu, just suffering through it, you know. Yes. To me at that stage, the idea was just to cultivate a sort of a unbreakable drive and spirit and endurance and that kind of thing. Sure, know? yeah. yeah. Okay. The hard Kung Fu man yep. sort of thing. Yeah. Which are all very attractive traits when you're younger, aren't they? It was like, for me, definitely. I think it is for everybody. I think, uh, I can't speak for women, I can only speak for males, having only been a male. I, can't, I don't, can't, don't have the direct experience, but I, I think mm -hmm. that almost all males have a yearning to be strong and indomitable and tough and capable on some level well they should i think they do yeah i just think that because they don't i think if you don't achieve it i think that's often like a root of a lot of insecurities yeah. or at least a dissatisfaction because it really yourself. means function to be functional man yeah i think so yeah so that that was sort of zero to full speed for me it was like that there okay. was no ramp up at all yes and then that just went for a long time and then the videos of Huang Xin Xian were the thing that... I did Tai Chi from day one. Oh, did you? I didn't But know it that. was empty, oh. nothing, just form. Oh, sure. Okay. My Sifu at the time said, do Tai Chi. It's like putting money in the bank for later. 
Okay, yes, Sifu. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, Beijing 24, was it? Was it? it? Was. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to yeah. see you doing Beijing 24. I can't even remember it. <laughs> yeah. You need the silk outfit for that. So one. that was the first form anyway. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, it was like that. It was not Tai Chi. Yeah, okay. It was just slow yeah. moving. It's a start. Yeah. It's a start. And then the videos of Wang Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's a little different for me because, uh, if, you know, my reason is, you know, because my parents couldn't afford a babysitter, took me along to... <laughs> Martial art classes have made me well, do it. Well, you were it. much younger too. I was four, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't, uh, there wasn't really any original aim, but I do remember, I do remember being frightened all the time because everyone was really big and smelt bad. You know, when you're a kid and you're around sweaty adults and they fucking, even the smell terrified me. I, I still am repulsed. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, I'm immune to it after growing <laughs> up around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're more repulsed than me by stuff. Yeah, like I'm that. funny about body fluids. And stuff. <laughs> uh, I think all the, Grappling I've done plus the the negong and the zufa going. I'm immune to body fluids. That's why I, I can't <laughs> be a grappler. Sense. Yeah <laughs> It is kind of gross sometimes sometimes you have to pair up and you see people avoiding the That's one right. That's how I learned issues. how to fire gin make them go as far as possible quickly. <laughs> yeah, sure get them away <laughs> Yeah, so because I came from that I think um, some of my earliest memories of martial arts the sort of scene I guess was I was I guess while everybody else was really fascinated in Bruce Lee, I remember everyone being yeah. fascinated in Bruce Lee when I was younger. I didn't give a fuck about Bruce Lee, and I still can't. Like, I, no. I really didn't care. I'm sure he's a remarkable human being, but he didn't inspire me at all. But while everybody else was fascinated by that, it was Musashi mm. that fascinated me. Mm. The idea of a master duelist swordsman who killed everybody, right up to the extent of fighting with an oar and shit like that at the end, and then getting to his deathbed. Well, actually, the story goes, whether it's true or not, I'm sure you know that a monk actually locked him in a library and wouldn't let him out for a period of time, according to the story, until he'd read all of the spiritual texts. Cultivate or else. The library. <laughs> it was that kind of thing. I'm sure it's more myth than anything else. Maybe not. Who knows? Sometimes these things are that extreme. And then he came out and carried on. But of course, at the end of his life, he wrote the Book of the Five Rings, which was the first book that I ever, ever read, which was an analogy of life and death combat into spiritual cultivation mm -hmm. to be a complete person right and i think that was the first time i was inspired actually by martial arts it went from something i was forced to do to okay mm. there's something else here so it was the cultivation the cultivation completely yeah. yeah the desire to defend myself or hurt people wasn't ever really particularly relevant and i can't say i've ever been inspired once by winning a medal no have you no no would you not like a medal no no. Only if I can melt it down and turn it into jewelry <laughs> or something like that. But other than that, no. <laughs> no. No, not at all. I did enter some competitions when I was younger. I had to enter um, uh, karate competitions, yeah, sure. which were full contact was the rule, but not to the head. They generally excluded yeah. the head because they didn't Typical wear... Typical karate rules, yeah. Yeah, I didn't wear gloves or anything. And I got disqualified a couple of times for striking the head. But uh, generally, they were, they were good in some ways, but... Awful in others. I, I tell you, what, I didn't mind the actual doing it. What I didn't like was the crowd. Mm. I really hated the crowd. I hated people watching you. And it wasn't from any shyness. It just felt like, I don't know if I want to hit someone or be hit for your entertainment. It, it was more like an arsiness came up in me. Like, fuck you, I'm not here to entertain you wankers. I, my view on all that thing is it's yeah. like the idea of the prize fighter. Like a cage fighter these days? Well, it, yeah, I mean a boxer or a cage okay. fighter, anyone. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, in my view, it's like I have nowhere to go. I've got no choices in life. I'm uneducated. I'm yes. broke. I'll fight to make money. Yes. I think that's what it always was. Last choice stuff. So why is it now exalted? Uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's seen as a high level or an admirable thing. Almost yeah. like being a Hollywood star. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it, admiring the skill is one thing, mm. but it's not the right way in life. It's the last choice in life. Mm -hmm. You're sacrificing your health and your brain and everything, yeah. right? It should be the absolute last choice. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, I have no interest in it. I mean, I've, no, there's always another choice. There was, a, there was a funny moment when I went to see the one of the UFC championships when I was in uh, Canada, America. I think, <coughs> I don't know, somewhere over there. I, did, I saw a couple, but one of them were the championships I went to see. No, probably in Vegas, I guess. And then I went there, and I'd already been before, but the ones I'd been before, I'm sure that's right, it was in Toronto. It was like a lower level one. 
And then I won, I went to see with the championships and I was really enjoying myself until about halfway through the night when I realized I'd become one of those wankers in the crowd that I did not want to fight in front of. <laughs> and then the shame kicked in and then you didn't enjoy it. I felt like I needed a really long cold shower and a good scrub afterwards just to get the sort of filth off of me of what I'd become basically. It's so it? not my scene. I've never been to anything like that. I mean, I don't I, think you'd like it. I, I mean, you know me yeah. well enough. I'd hate it. It's yeah. too many people. It's too much weird emotion. It's I'd want to wash badly. I'd enjoy taking you there just to yeah, see I'm your sure discomfort, you actually. <laughs> Imagine it. It. It, me, yeah. <laughs> it was a weird vibe. Weird, weird vibe. Yeah, it's not, not my cup of tea. No. No. I think the, the other problem I had as well was I came to realize, especially teenage years, was I went from an, a nervous child to a slightly psychotic teenager. Mm -hmm. there was, yeah. I guess puberty was a little... Yeah. <laughs> there was a juxtaposition there. So I, the other thing I realized was I, when I was in violence outside of martial art classes, I, well, I that's, it's not violence in a martial arts. Class. No, it's no, it's said. Even yeah, a, yeah it's it's said. But outside of that, when there's like uncertainties yeah. and da, 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 I realized I actually really enjoyed it, and that was a problem that arose in me, and I was quite surprised. Almost had like a bloodlust in a way a few mm -hmm. times, yeah, yeah. and it didn't matter if I was winning or losing. There was, there was one time I remember just getting my, my ribs just basically kicked in um, around the back of a bar in my hometown. And I remember loving every second of it, just laughing my ass off as they were kicking me, which was confusing these guys. And I just <laughs> realized that there's not a healthy psychology around this for me. There's something that's not good. That's, I, that's what made me focus on Tai Chi instead of um, Kung Fu, let's say. Because you could get away from that feeling? or yeah. because you Okay, right. Because I also... Uh, I love, I love it. Sure. Or at least I did. Yes. And but I was also doing meditation and doing cultivation, and I, I felt sh deep shame. Right. And uh, hot, like uh, repulsed by myself. Yeah. Okay. I and can I, wait. And I'm like, I'll just do tai chi, and that will fulfill that part of my nature in a way that's not mm. vile. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I quit the actual martial like striking and stuff that day i remember very vividly the oh, really? moment it happened like that yeah okay cool yeah yeah i mean i'd done plenty but then it arose it to, it, towards somebody that i wouldn't want it to arise towards at that time and yeah i was repulsed by the ugliness okay. of the violence and everything it just made me quit on the spot it's not good no violence it poisons you yeah yeah it's it's poison for the soul so i just let it go it's, I find it strange that there's such an obsession with it within, I know martial arts, there's going to be discussion of violence, but I do find it strange, the almost worship of it in some ways. Like it's the highest thing. Yeah. It's the lowest part of the art. <laughs> it's, it's the equivalent of the sexual stuff being yeah, exactly. overly exalted in the dregs like Qigong, of the right? Like yeah. the lowest of the low. Yeah, that's it. It's like everything is flipped again, right? Yeah, I mean, it yeah. is, yeah, it's the inversion, right? Mm. Like for, for the training, like the defense, self-defense, the martial part, I consider the lowest little percentage and then health and then cultivation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, for me, it's 90% cultivation. Yep. And the 10% left over, 90% of that is health. Yeah. And sure. then there's a little bit of, which there isn't even of self-defense. It's done. But like, I think that's how I would ratio it. I think it's interesting that you always... Uh like what I know about your background and things. Uh, there's been lots of parallels, I think, in our paths. Very much. Sometimes yeah. different uh, faces, different eras or lengths of times on things, I think, but very similar. But the, what I think one of the key differences I can see is you often came to your own conclusions. Well, I'm the biggest about. loner, like that's why. Yeah, so you like realized for yourself you were repulsed at something yeah, that was sure. in yourself or whatever. And uh, mine was the opposite. I had to have someone tell me, like I'm a dumbass. So I, would, I was just stuck with these awful... <laughs> conflict inside about what I was doing and then had to actually meet a teacher that for me I've always had to meet someone that I'm inspired by mm -hmm. or trusted by to tell me what I think and like okay yeah you're right and then, <laughs> and then, and then, well, it's working and then for you. steered me away <laughs> on that path yeah but then you, you sort of look back and you're like why couldn't I figure that out myself no. what, a, what an idiot <laughs> like I should have done I should have known that but you know, maybe that's who I am maybe sometimes I need Almost clarification, I guess, or what's the word? Yeah, something Re like that. Yeah, it needs to be reinforced, or yeah, yeah. But it has to. It's very few people can do that. It has to be it's someone I'm really, 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 really sure. inspired by. Yeah, mm. yeah. 
I'm not easily inspired. No. So that's part of it, I guess. No, me either these days. That's a problem, isn't it? The further you go into it, the more inspiring somebody has to be in order to... It's dismal. It's a problem. Yeah. yeah. So I think Tai Chi then, as uh, I think Tai Chi is generally the art everybody gets to, isn't it? With When they're really interested in cultivation, Tai Chi is where they end up. Possibly Bagua, you know, like if, if you're a martial arts guy. Yeah, yes. if you're a martial arts guy and you're hunting through, you always end up in Tai Chi, don't you? Pretty Basically. much. Or a Bagua, like you say, but mainly Tai Chi. Mainly Tai Chi, yeah. Most, even most of the Tai Chi, most of the Bagua guys that I knew, I guess there's exceptions, the famous ones. End up in Tai Chi. End up in Tai Chi, yeah, yeah they do. Or, or even their Bagua becomes very Tai Chi, yeah, you know, right. like it that's right. evolves in that direction. So there's something about Tai Chi that's, you know, arguably more. I don't know, better for cultivation. I don't want to say better. It's hard to put them on a hierarchy of other, other arts. More suitable. Yeah, more suitable. Because Shaolin obviously has a long history of yeah, they connection to cultivation. Yeah. But I yeah. still think they end up in Tai Chi. Like even yeah. if you look at the kind of Rochuan Chuan and the soft fists and yeah. that, they kind of go in that way. Yeah. What do you think it is about Tai Chi? I think it's... Uh, is it the outfits? <laughs> yes. Oh. oh, there we go. I think it's the equanimity side of things it's okay. uh, i mean it's obviously the chi development and all that mm -hmm. but i think it's the equanimity yeah equanimity okay meaning the freedom from fight and flight yeah sure yeah the stillness and the, the fact that, that it's trained in the body a sort of somatic yeah. way into the mental yeah. quality yeah. or something it's a tangible handle of a mental quality right a testable yes version and uh which is sort of fundamental for all spiritual paths yep and it's a great way to get it in my opinion uh, because you can test it y yeah well and train it directly delusion is a big problem right self Huge. delusion yeah. self yeah. delusions or it's a bit of a harsh word I don't even mean delusion misappropriating your yeah. experience yeah yeah overconfidence underconfidence yeah. Uh, yeah those kind of things yeah which is definitely a case of meditation Mainly, more than anything, because yeah. it's all on the mat, right? And who's yep. going to tell you? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I've seen, I've been in, uh, you know, I've been in classes where people will assume somebody is very good at meditation, and what they mean is they can sit still. Yeah. Well, that's step it's one. A good start. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't mean you're doing meditation at all, let alone good at it. No, no. I've met some of the best people I've met at meditation don't really ever sit. Yeah, sure. Because they've been through, they did. Yeah. yeah. They did, but they've been through that process, right? Yeah. yeah. So in, in Tai Chi then, like, that sort of uh, consistent release of stress under pressure or yeah. something like that yeah. to mobilize everything inside, which is <laughs> it's a lengthy, bloody process. So mainly how hardwired the nervous system is. Well, you know, I like to say <laughs> your, pers your personality is bullshit. It lies. Your mind yes. lies. Your nervous system doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. Lies to you. Sometimes yourself, the nervous system. I think it does sometimes. How so? I think it's very good at normalizing. I think the nervous system lies to you in a way that you can have a kind of inbuilt stress or pressure or something, and you normalize it to the extent that it's masked. But you don't think the nervous system shows that stress? I don't think it does until very, very late well, when it turns know. into an illness or right. it turns into a chronic disease. Apart from when you have something like Tai Chi is what I mean. Like when, when you, you put a force on the nervous system shows you immediately. Yes. Yeah, yeah, completely, yeah. So I It equalizes know. with things, that's the problem, right? So it equalizes yeah. with a problem, like you say, and becomes a disease. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you only equalize the external forces too. That can happen too, right? You can get like a false version where you're not achieving any equanimity, you just become equalized to the kind of force. Yes, completely, yeah. So it would be like the near enemy. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 that's, that's what the I call counterfeit. The, the dishonesty of the nervous system. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. Like those, uh, <laughs> which actually, I shouldn't say those people you teach, because I've been that fucking person that you teach, where you're like, you're sure you're relaxed, you know? They say relax, and like, I, I'm pretty sure I'm relaxed, and then bang, like, there's that tension that just. Well, that's what up. I mean. It's not like you're not relaxed. You think you are. Uh, sure, sure. Lying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Your yeah. mind interface with the nervous system definitely lies. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But then when you're shown, it's like, a, okay, there's a lot of work. The proof is right then. there. If you move, you won't release, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very rare to ever touch hands with someone who is, I mean, fully released is an odd word, but somewhere very far down that spectrum. Isn't Super. It? 
yeah, I've touched so many people and less than I can count on one hand, right, that are far along that spectrum. I mean, there's, oh, it's I, like a percent of a percent of something of the good people. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> without being inflammatory or being inflammatory, I would say a lot of Tai Chi people are so unreleased in the nervous system mm. that they don't even have to touch hands with you. They just have to watch one of your videos and they're all, <laughs> it sets off all of their tension. <laughs> it's like you're, your song has touched into their tension anyway. The empty force. Yeah, completely. through the internet. <laughs> that's mystical shit, man. <laughs> Just, yeah. I mean, that's the other thing that surprised me is the more I did Tai Chi, maybe it is just my testosterone dropping as I get older. I don't know. But I like to think at least some of it was due to my training. That, uh, that yeah, I mean, that, that's it. It should transfer through to the mind, right? So that equity Honestly, should I, arise in you. If it doesn't, I don't know yeah. what they're doing. They're doing something radically different to what I'm doing. Yeah. Which, I mean, there's many different ways. Yeah. But I don't know how it can't. Let's see. Maybe their, their mind's not saturated in the body. They're not engaging through the mind to the body. They're just doing body, so they miss yeah. the mind. Now, there's a really interesting thing, actually, to bring up. That kind of moves us in that direction of a conversation we had the other day, which I don't know if that was a private conversation, but it was sort of that mind-body connection idea mm -hmm. in that you would assume that the more this training it does and the more you saturate the mind through the higher degree of mind-body connection you have yep so that you're more aware and da, da, da. but then i yeah i think we both came to the conclusion that actually we're completely disconnected <laughs> yeah i mean uh, yes you get more in a certain way but i certainly am not sensitive yeah at all <laughs> no and uh yeah, I mean, it just sort of, it's, everything's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. And but I that's think, the freedom from things, I think. Yes, and then it's that thing, like somebody asked me, I was talking to the group about it, somebody asked me the other day, like, did you have a good weekend? And I went to say automatically yes, and I was like, I don't know what you mean. Like, do you mean on, <laughs> it, it, the person regretted asking me, it's like, do you mean objectively a good weekend? Because actually a lot of Definitely. really difficult no. things, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's really bad, a lot of really bad things happen this weekend. Do you mean emotionally? I had a really good weekend. <laughs> like, I don't know what Same as any other one, it. right? Yeah, completely. Yeah. It was the same. Like, so the... Exactly that. That's what I'm talking about. Not sensitive to experience. You just let it go. You're indifferent yes. to it. You're detached from it. That's yes. because you, you, I think you, you saturate the mind into the body, you build connection, but what do you do with that connection? Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Well, you release, that's one of the things yep. you do, you stimulate that. Right? Which in a way creates space. Exactly creates space, It's like space, you're, you're closing all the spaces and closing all the gaps to create space. I think it definitely creates space. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So it's like, my personal experience is you can experience the full spectrum of emotions, but another part of your mind doesn't really register them in a way. You have to kind of... It's, weird when people it's like recollection is different. Yeah, you experience emotion, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. It just happens. Do you care? You're like, still cool about it. I'm still happy even though I'm pissed off, or I'm still happy even when I'm sad, something like that. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. still like, good. It's all good. And I've seen that in you. I've seen that. I've known you long enough to see that even when things are difficult. No, yeah, it doesn't matter. No, you're, you're still the same. Yeah. Like it's a ride. Yeah. I've seen a moderate, this is Adam Annoyed. Uh, oh, that's it done. Yeah. And there was that, uh, there's, yeah, I can see it and yeah. uh, then it's gone, right? Yeah. I it's think, been like that for years, many years. So the question I have, not just for you, I guess for myself, kind of pondering, is does that mean that it doesn't leave a mark anywhere? Because there's a part of me that's thinking, oh good, I've released all this connection to things, I'm good. And then I'm wondering if 20 years time, I'm just gonna, oh no, no, it's all been stored there. Do you know what I mean? Like some little locked away yeah, yeah. corner of the it, psyche or it something. It probably leaves a mark somewhere. Yeah, maybe I don't wanna delve and find it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the conditioned world happens how it happens, right? Yes. Like it, I'm sure it does something to the body I think sometimes injuries pop up from it. Yeah. Like I don't, my internal health is pretty, that's pretty robust. It's yeah. pretty good. I'm always okay. If I do get sick, I recover quick. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I just get these just terrible, like really bad injuries, like tendons or snap or something that I've yeah. done. And I do wonder if sometimes Me that, too. is that where the stress is going? I don't know. No, I don't know. I've got no idea. But no. it makes sense to me that it has to go somewhere. It's conditioned. It's, you know. Cause and effect has to happen even if you're 
mentally free from it. It still has to happen on its own plane, right? Yeah. At least to some extent. I'd say it gets diluted a lot, but yes, something happens. I think I'd still rather experience there, it there, oh, yeah. than in my reactivity oh, yeah. or my emotions. Well, it, you, yeah. let's, let's say, okay, no matter how bad it gets, I'm sti you're still happy, right? Yeah. I don't mean filled with joy. I'm not talking about that. Sure. I mean, cool. Yeah. It's all cool. It's all good. Just at ease, yeah. happy enough all the time, even if everything's really bad. Yep. That's way better than the normal state of humanity. Everything's really good. You don't realize it's all good. 1% goes wrong and you're miserable, right? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the exact opposite sort of state. Yes. I, I'm glad I do remember being very much in that state actually when I was, when younger. I was a teenager, I yeah. was that. Yeah. 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 Everything was the biggest problem. Yeah. Uh, Girl turns you down. Everything I mean, didn't do something. Get you everything is the whole world. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. It just stresses. You. It just it demolishes everything. It's like the whole pack of cards falls down yeah. around you, and yeah, you I can't just, step out at all. You are the problem. I fear I would still live in that state if I hadn't done these arts. Well, I usually when I meet people from my childhood or something like that, yeah. I think they're still sixteen. Right. So Even they don't look sixteen. No. Right. Okay. Sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But behaviorally, yeah. meaning it, how they most people function in reference and reaction to stimuli, emotional stimuli, mm. physical stimuli, is like a child, like a teenager, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's standard view that most people sort of stop evolving in terms of personality at around that age. I, I heard earlier. Well, I maybe heard, it is. Yeah. I heard to be uh, apparently by age six or seven. A lot of, uh, that's what I was told. I don't know if it's true or not. I'm sure there'll be people disagreeing under this. A but lot must happen when you're a teenager. So many influences, yeah. the way you develop taste and everything. And you know. I think the view was that you're kind of, many of your inbuilt biases are already decided by that sure. age, which I guess would probably be from primary caregivers like yeah, parents, parents and things, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. And stuff like this. Yeah. And then what you get, you get your snotty teenage friends on top of that as another layer. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's quite young to... To finish that development, it's a little, it? it's a little quick. It's oh, it's also like society. It's a, it's a bit of a trap you can fall into, isn't it? Because when you leave education, sixteen to eighteen or something, you do have the possibility to literally stop learning anything ever again for the rest of your life. That's, if you that's want pretty to. common, which is worrying. I don't like it if there's been a day where I haven't learned something, you know. And I don't mean like learn what this guy's wearing today or something. It has to be something. I'm just, if it's a new fact, I'm really, oh, wow, I didn't know that about stars or something. That's interesting. I have to have something like that. But in the background, I also have to have a complete study because I, that I'm working on because I couldn't imagine what would happen to my brain if I, I did Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, I don't think I study enough and my brain is definitely rotting. <laughs> <laughs> you need more, have a little thing. <laughs> Does it help? It will. Yeah. No, it's definitely less than it was. Mm. Like, that's, that's definitely a truth, yeah. You don't study these days? You don't study something? Uh, Actually working on your practice. I practice. Yeah. But that's a kind of study, right? Yeah. I mean like nerd study. Nerd study. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I still have that. I, I quite like to, just for fun, like I'll find the syllabus out of a university chemistry course or something and then just teach myself through having it playing in the background, yeah. lectures on that subject. I, I still kind of do all that kind of stuff and I don't really know why. I'm not majorly fascinated yeah, yeah. in those subjects particularly but there are things i study you could say but it's definitely not a very big piece of my life sure yeah, yeah okay well, maybe it's not required you know maybe i'm still caught in that habit because i have my cultivation practice and everything that i do but but I, it is a bit of a user or loser yeah yeah you have to use it enough i think yeah, okay yeah i don't know where enough is but you're calmer than me. I've got a bit more ADHD, so I think... You have more energy than I do. <laughs> I, have to, I have to entertain this part of my brain, basically, yeah. Get it doing something. Otherwise, it starts to cause trouble, which yeah. is usually what I find. If I don't give my mind something to do, That's it definitely causes not trouble. me. Which is a Christian saying, right? Yeah, yeah. What's that? Devil's hands... Don't let the empty. mind empty or the devil will enter or something like that. Something like that, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm definitely not that. I Bible could sit and gaze into work. space for days. I don't need anything. Yeah, no, I couldn't do it. Oh, I could, if I was focused on a practice. Yeah, if you're doing meditation or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's almost shamanic, you know? Just sitting right. staring into the... Yeah. Maybe there's a little shaman in you. <laughs> Wash it out. 
<laughs> yeah, totally. So there's a, there's a principle I wanted to ask you about. I, I can't find a way to seamlessly drop this into this conversation. So I want to ask you, because it's one of the ones that, uh, there's two principles in Tai Chi that I think everybody has a different definition of. And one of them I don't care <coughs> about, because <laughs> I think it's pointless. But the mm -hmm. other one that's very fascinating is Zhong Ding. Mm -hmm. So obviously Zhong Ding, if people don't know, if people listen, the Zhong Ding's often translated as central equilibrium, which is kind of what it means. Zhong means a center and Ding means a, a horizontal level line, essentially. So it's not a bad definition of it, really, central equilibrium. It's often also by some people talked about as being the center line in mm -hmm. the body, almost like a, you know, a bath or a merry-go-round or a carousel horse or something from the crown to the perineum, which I, I certainly don't agree with, and I'm assuming Adam doesn't agree with that either. No, but um, I think it's increasingly, because of communication online, in the West being understood to be a major part of Tai Chi. I think it is the yeah. major part of Tai Chi, not a major part. So what is it? <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's difficult to... Ten words or less. No, just don't get it. I'm always ten words or less. Yeah, I know you are. You're uh, very succinct. I think it's something like... Yeah. The balancing line. Okay. Line can be physical, can also be <laughs> metaphysical. I didn't mean to slurp the cocktail to ruin the <laughs> sincerity of the moment. So. <laughs> Between yep. uh, yin-yang okay. and balancing them. So it's the equalizing point between all the opposing yin yang factors mm, okay yep and what okay, that yeah. means mm. is so it's a line well not a line yeah. in doesn't mean it's a line in the body yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what that mean means changes with time yeah so the first physical jung ding the way i teach it is when the releasing down of the flesh and the rising of the bones mm -hmm. achieve balance and harmony right sure yeah. so you don't feel one more dominant or one yeah. doesn't have more so you don't have too much sink yeah. you don't have too much up and you have that immovability okay and pong and everything caused by that yeah okay. it's the first jung ding that i teach okay yeah first and then you add the next one without throwing away the first one yeah and sure. so on yeah, and so yeah, it's yeah. a plus b plus c plus d like right. that okay and so jung ding is an evolving thing and as you get better and better your jung ding is more complete and it must be sustained essentially when i guess well, first static then in motion and then under yeah. pressure well right? the second you're out of it you're out of tai chi sure yeah that's why okay. i say it's the most important factor it is mm. what's well, the final of the 13 right okay sure yeah, yeah. it's it's it is tai chi chuan mm. this is making power receiving power doing all the things whilst maintaining jung ding yeah sure 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 so this is why I've seen you talk about maintaining qualities no matter what the other person yeah, does yeah, yeah. in partner work or something, yeah. right? And there's many, many different components, like sure. physical, mental, chi-wise, that have to be in balance to get that mm. equalizing point, and that equalizing point leads to emptiness, basically. Right, okay, yeah, so yeah. that's that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I remember I, one of the first uh, teachers who really gone deep in the Tai Chi, I guess, that I had, <coughs> I was quite lucky because center line was never something I was really taught particularly mm -hmm. in fact i remember right from the beginning being told that that central vertical line didn't really matter compared to other arts yep which was confusing and liberating a little bit coming from external arts into no, that it's definitely liberating because what yeah. you do protect it but also confusing because i remember rigid like, right uh, rigid let it go mm -hmm. what like it was a very difficult thing but I, it was explained to me right when i was younger was that it was to do with a lot of the pairings with regards to the alignments of the body so, for example, they would pair them. So one of them being to raise the back or suspend the and crown. And empty the chest. And empty the chest being yeah. the paired one. Yeah. yeah. So we would train the two together and then being able to sustain them at the same time. So if one's more than the ways. other, you off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. essentially, yeah. Then they yeah. would pair across different alignments through the body. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, raising the bones or sinking the flesh was one of them included yeah. in that. Yeah. I think all of those things, and they get extremely complicated beyond yes. alignment. Yeah, to do with yeah. the way the chi mobilizes and yeah, yeah, all yeah. that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's basically that in my view. I could always feel it as well, like in the early days of pushing hands, because take, for example, that one releasing the chest and uh, opening the back or raising the back or raising the crown, whatever. Having those principles, I could feel that as soon as I took pressure, I can either sustain this by going solid to maintain it, mm -hmm. in which case Zhongding's gone anyway, or it's <laughs> trying to mobilize the force inside 
neutralize it so they can be sustained with no physical pressure was such a, a trip to try to learn, especially in pushing hands, because the first class I was in, even though I was going to see like a teacher that m talked about that level, my push hands, they weren't pushing hands. Right. So I was then having to push hands in a very wrestling, group. grapply class that were, when, that were entering <coughs> tournaments. Right. So trying to apply yeah, that. I got to leap. Yeah, in yeah, increments, yeah. it's easier to build and maintain the quality, but yes. to leap is not easy. Yeah, very difficult. Yeah, and if I wrestled with them, I could hold my own quite sure. well. But but as soon as I tried to maintain the principles, and then I understood that's what that, investing in loss is, right? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I learned that saying. It was almost like it was stamped across my losing whilst forehead. whilst doing it correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being more devoted to the art than winning. That's what it means. Right? My ego didn't like it, damn it, because <laughs> they used to mock me because they would just run through me, you know? And, and exactly that makes your ego react less and you're more capable of maintaining Jung Ding because <laughs> of it. It took a while. <laughs> it took a while. Yeah, it got the hang of it eventually. And then, uh, but yeah, it was a steep learning curve. Yeah. But I do remember like thinking at the time, this is not obvious. So I, I have sympathy. It's with... very far from obvious. Totally. It's not Very natural. Fun. It's the opposite of natural. Completely. Tai Chi is the opposite of natural. I think all cultivation is the opposite of natural. Of course it is. Yeah. yeah. It's Why? the path of reversal. Why do you think that? Well, because natural is. No, let's reverse it. Why do you think they say it's the path to being natural? Oh, I, I'm not a scholar, so I don't know what word they're using in Chinese when they say that. Zoran. They yeah. certainly don't talk about it being natural in Buddhism. They say it is against the stream. I've heard Buddhists say it's the path of being natural. What modern day Buddhists don't study Buddhism. <laughs> so the sure. Buddha says the Dharma goes against the stream. Mm. So what is the stream? From God, from divinity, mm -hmm. born, whatever, down, degeneration, death. Right, sure. Right? Yep. What's cultivation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other way. I would agree completely from a Taoist perspective. That's what's re reversing the course or returning to source. That's what the path is. is. That is what yeah. the path of cultivation is. Yes. To me, that's what the path of Tai Chi is. From the body to the Chi and up like that. I've never seen And it's a yin yang natural. steps up. I've never seen anything natural in any of these. No, things. it's the opposite. I've never of seen natural. anything natural. No. You, you, you retrain everything. No. You, you train your breath, you train the way you stand, you train the way you walk, you train the way you sleep, you train the mm -hmm. way you move. And it's not just that they're cultivated that means they're unnatural. They are actually radically opposing what is, mm. what is, what is spontaneous, what arises spontaneously, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Radically opposing. So, a Tai Chi example, how do you make force? Well, you tense your muscles yep. and you slate the upper body, right? You yep. throw your upper mass around and opposite, 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 opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the rule I try to tell people I'm teaching. Tai Chi is the antithesis to logical martial arts. Yeah training it, it whatever you've done in anything else switch it around you're probably starting to get towards maybe that's why coming back to what we mentioned before why tai chi why cultivators mm -hmm. like tai chi as opposed to other martial arts more so mm -hmm. because it's so unnatural it's so the opposite it's therefore it's actually very in alignment with mm -hmm. the path of reversal but not in alignment with the natural way yeah. I think that's part of the reason why at least there's such a high degree of mindfulness in some ways. But you have to be extremely mindful. Because every single thing you do, you're going to do naturally, yeah. if you get what I mean. Yeah. So all that does have to be unwound. Nothing can be automatic. Everything has to be in manual. That's really interesting. Yeah, that point you put in, nothing can be automatic. This is so different to what most martial arts... Well, they want muscle memory and re reactions. reactions. Mm -hmm. They're the enemy in Tai Chi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, absolutely. Yeah. I so agree. you have to be supremely mindful. But why? Why is it the issue? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's better for cultivation. That's all I care about. Sure, okay. Yeah. Mm. I don't care about the other result or not very much. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than a bit of fun. Yeah. I, I still really enjoy martial arts. Uh, I, it, it, more conventional martial arts sure. training. I still really like it. I, I think it's good. Uh, I think it's really good for the people I'm teaching, especially the ones that are younger, <laughs> and and I enjoy the interaction with them on that level. Well, you know, if they haven't done that, then they're not going to be able to yeah. do the other stuff, more internal stuff, very well. You need a body. Mm -hmm. You need to know where it is, how it moves. You need to be able to endure. You need to be able to apply effort. You, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like what was normal once upon a time. 
I have been, been surprised when I'm teaching. I'm like, hey, you know, like when you hit someone and all the young boys just look at me blank. I've never done that. Yeah, they've never hit anybody. And I realize but they're either much nicer than me or life has just no, changed. It's changed. It's yeah. Changed. It doesn't feel like play fighting or or even not play fighting, like yeah. disco fighting when you're younger, which is yeah. never life or death, well, really, they, is it? They don't even have bullying anymore. No. No. Which I'm sure people think is good, but I think it's really bad. Well, they do. They have online bullying yeah. instead. Yeah, now it's, it's worse. But, uh, yeah. The problem is all the lessons you learn from that, mm. they don't get that. There's nothing to overcome. And so when they go into the real world, they just don't have the qualities. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's a negative thing that they've eradicated that from schools and stuff. You, eradicated bullying? Yeah. Hmm. That's probably the opposite take of how most people. I'm sure say. it is. Yeah. I thought I. Because you make a, a pack you mean, of. You mean physical bullying, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I do. Because I even, think bullying is worse now. It is, but or more more common. It is. It's worse in a lot of ways too. But even that, the world's just not a pretty place. You have to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. It's like growing up in a little bubble, and then you go outside, and sure, you sure. you don't you're not robust. You're weak. You're sick. You. You can't resist anything in life. It's totally. not going to work for anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, when you're young and adaptive and forming your personality and capable of changing quickly, you want pressure. Like, yeah, no pressures. It's not going to work out. Life's not utopia. And in some ways, the psychological pressure of online bullying, which a lot of people suffer whilst being divorced from any real threat, almost. How, like, how do you cultivate? Like, it, it doesn't pressurize you in the way that is useful in no, no, development. No. In it's some purely ways. negative. Oh, yeah. it's, it's purely negative. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nowadays, you can bully someone on the other side of the planet. Well, the thing is, ah. even the bully's not getting anything out. Like, yeah. see, when the bully, someone finally stands up to the bully, they get a lesson too, you know? Yeah. It's, it's yes. not right that the bully is not learning about life either. Yes. But in this it's internet version, yeah, no one's getting anything. No. And I've seen people, <laughs> I've seen it happen, almost take pleasure at winning an online argument like it's. <laughs> like they've won a real fight or something like ha defeated this guy or or something like the the you, there's forums full of people grown men in their 50s joyous because they were blocked well that's, and like that's that. you know and they have their <laughs> online persona and they're like avatar yeah, yeah. Or whatever it's called and like they cultivate that instead of themselves yeah I, like i play a video game and my video game character he's handsome and muscular and he's got all the chicks Level and he's got powers, le yeah, the high level, and like, I made it. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's another layer. Of, it's like if you've got the spirit <laughs> realm, awesome. causal, astral, whatever, blah, yeah. blah, blah, then you've got the physical realm, which, you know, spiritual traditions have long said this might not be the most real realm yeah, that we right. live within, and now we've added another one. The most pure delusional realm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've added a video game realm and telephone realm and avatar realm yeah. or whatever, like yeah. all these layers. that It's like before you even get past the the mire of this current existence you have to get yeah. through all of those layers first and people are stuck in those kind of layers yeah did you know there's a gender ideology based upon your on online character no a, and insight. i don't know what that means right let me explain i can't remember it's called something like something something fox i don't know but, but I, I, like a foxy woman no no because this may come as a surprise to you, but they've developed these machines called computers. <laughs> you came up. You've observed my <laughs> level of high techness, I yeah. see. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, a fuck, now I'm going to get the terminology wrong and embarrass, the terminology wrong and embarrass myself as well. That's disproving my point. Oh, rain. But um, there's a rival to Google or an alternative called Firefox, right? Right. That's another search engine. And uh, so they named the gender after this. And basically it is, you want to be identified by the gender that your online persona is rather than your real person. So if I identify as male mm. and then my online persona is female or one of the other genders, then you must identify my real gender as that gender. It's of my just one step online. towards upload my consciousness onto the web and I'll be a yeah. digital immortal. Hey man, I'm really, I'm really woke, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I know. I'm down with it. I'm happy to accept that I'm just out of date, but once it gets to that level, nah, fuck it, I'm lost. Like, I got no idea. I, Unfortunately, those people will I've be lost. lost. That's a big problem for them. Yeah, I, it, that's terrible. That's bad. It, it, with regards to that, you know, like, male, female, you want to be that, you want to be this, whatever. But once you're identifying as your online avatar, that's a little concerning. I think that's a little bit, that's a step too far. It's, yeah. The delusion is thick, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it's easy for me as a cultivator 
my identity shouldn't matter. Like, uh, if you're interested in cultivation at yes. all, yes. The first lesson is stop identifying, right? Yeah, yeah. And that lesson never ends. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in the cultivation world at all, and you identify as something, you're off track. Yeah, totally. I've had people at the start of classes now ask me to identify them as something like, you know, can you use this pronoun or something? And I've had to say to them, look, just how about your name? Yeah, totally. Like, but this is a code of it. Like your ident this is the least important place for your identity. This yeah. is th this arena. This space is identity less. It doesn't matter. Exactly. You, you're not even male or female. You're just a lump of flesh that needs correcting so that you can do it your art better mm -hmm. and then that's it. hopefully you will arise with all of that kind of mentality it feels like the wrong maybe, place maybe that's why it's uh at least for me i find all that stuff very difficult to yeah, yeah relate yeah. to at all in any way yeah spend decades it's not identifying releasing identification me too I, but then when i chat with my brother who is more he's not a cultivator and he's in that world mm -hmm. and he's very interested in, normal, in like that yeah and he's interested in the latest trends and the latest fads he gets it all do you know what i mean he he under, like he's into it and then he talks to me and i say so he's like you're a caveman brother and i just maybe it's because i'm older but i think actually it's the same it's because i'm in a world that you're really not supposed to be focused on any of those kind of things so this obsession with identification does seem a little counterproductive the problem is mm. the, so what's the cause of suffering yes identification <laughs> is the cause of suffering yes uh. So I went to a Buddhist <laughs> university or college, I can't remember, in America. And when I walked in the door, this is a Buddhist college, and it made me think of you, because as I walked in the door, they handed me a badge and I had to put my pronouns on the badge as I walked in, which I thought was just a really cosmic joke. Like if I'd have walked into a social work university or a psychology college, I would have thought, yeah, but okay. in Buddhist one, that was really funny. I should have been able to just write emptiness. It and says it all, like, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> over, it's over. <laughs> it just made me laugh. The, but when I said that to the people I was with, they didn't get the joke. They don't know Buddhism. They were the lecturers. <laughs> I'd argue yeah. they don't know Buddhism. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I could counter that by saying maybe if you're studying the history of Buddhism, you're not Buddhist. But I think everybody was Buddhist at that university. So, But not just Buddhism, yeah. all spirituality. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. All of it. Mm. You have to go beyond identifying so you can identify with the divine maybe that is a gender what is your divine gender? divine divine gender divine demo i identify <laughs> as divine is that not good enough that, that's good enough i'm you down with that one identify me as divine yeah that one's great it's good i'm gonna do that i'm gonna that's add it. that to all my social media i think it's a good stuff. one yeah <laughs> so as i present you with this pina colada oh which is is that curdled is that supposed to happen? It's all right. It's all right, is it? Yeah, Just stir it up a bit. Stir. Pina colada. This is a highly feminine drink, right? Pina suits colada. my shirt. It does suit your shirt, my flowers. I think actually I identify Ronnie as and Dow might be jealous that we're drinking these while they're not here, actually. Mm. It's pretty good, though. But while we're here drinking these cocktails, I'd like to ask you about toxins. <laughs> toxins versus... Purity, I suppose, or, okay. or cleanliness. What's the opposite? Detox yeah, purity, alone. like in health. Yeah, so in the body. Let me present you with an idea or a concept and see what you think. When I am teaching, I've always had a. I mean, I'm fairly clean living, yeah. contrary to what our videos might look like. I'm fairly clean living, like I look after myself. But at the same time, I'll allow myself to just let loose and have a drink or a cigar yeah. or something like that wouldn't want to be addicted to the things but yeah. uh no i think it's cool but it always horrifies the people i know or the people i teach quite often when they hear that that's happened or something because there's yeah. almost like a, an aversion to toxins mm -hmm. and i've they, experienced the same yeah i get it yeah and i but why do i see so many of these people that are averse to toxins so toxic that's my question. It's, it's like they're so clean living, some of these people. They, well, not, a, not a drop of sugar enters their mouth. You know? So they're they, weak then. All right, elaborate on that. Because <laughs> that's quite a, a damning statement. <laughs> well, that, I think health, health is to be robust is to be healthy. Yeah, yeah. To be strong. 
I don't mm -hmm. just mean you can pick up heavy things strong, it, to have the ability to endure. Shrug stuff off. Yeah. Yep. And if you are, live in a bubble, but back to the bubble, right? Yeah. The no sugar bubble, the everything bubble. Mm -hmm. The moment something cuts you, which it does, because you're in the world, you're sick. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's a problem. It's like when parents bring up their kids exactly. with a totally clean yeah. diet, and then they generally develop addictions <laughs> to like sugars and shit. It's not going to work yeah. out. Yeah. And your body probably can't deal with it. And it's not going to deal with things. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of those people just don't get enough nutrition. There's that. Hmm. Yeah, because they think that highly nutritious food is like too fatty or too this or too that. So they eat something with basically no nutrition. Yeah. So they're weak, blood yeah. deficient. Yeah. yeah. I've taught really strenuous courses. Um, you've seen what I teach, yeah. especially while you've been here. And I think it's fair to say it's quite hard work, some of the stuff I do with these guys. Yeah. Contrary to what a lot of the people might think out there in the YouTube world they think what i teach is very gentle it oh, it's same they think it's like a breeze you guys just like wave your hands around yeah, yeah yeah so i've done they these highly try. strenuous lessons and then lunchtime comes and people have got like a bowl of i don't even know what dal is but they have <laughs> dal and yeah there's some unknown grains in there i can't quite see and a single olive yeah they should, on the they should have a steak or something yeah, yeah, and it's been a real hard sell sometimes to tell people, or if you're vegetarian, just eat fucking more. You can't, you can't have that little like you need, you need to eat a lot. sack of beetroot or yeah. something like. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing that people don't consume enough. Not even close. Mm. Not even close. Yeah. At every every time I teach a workshop before lunch, all right, go eat heaps of protein, everyone. Yes. I, I order them to go do it every time. Right. I don't know what they do. Uh, maybe I need to be heavier but on that. I at least let them know what I think. Of course, I'm not yeah. going to control what they eat. Yeah, but sure. there's no if, but, or maybe about what I think about it. Right, okay. Because you can't transform your body if you don't fuel it. Yes. You can't build the chi if you don't fuel it. You're just going to go backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's because as well, I, when I chat to them, it's known that at later stages you consume less. Less. Yeah, way later. Yeah, exactly. Way later. Yeah. yeah. Your body has to get to a stage where it's able to even develop or sustain itself from the inside or from somewhere deeper before yeah. you replace your normal sustenance, right? Yeah. Mm. Which is way later. <laughs> yeah, I'm not there. Right. <laughs> That's mm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, no, no one you're teaching is, mm. right? I mean, I think it's way later. You think it's way later. Therefore, for the students, yes. it's way, 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 way later. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. It's this thing, I read a book about an immortal, I read a book about a Buddha, and they didn't sleep and didn't eat. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, try that. <laughs> so, so, there's, so that brings us on to another thing then. What, this idea of being a Buddha. What is a Buddha? <laughs> it's almost like that Zimbabwe video. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, I'm not what is a Buddha? Okay. Yeah. Why are you a Buddha? <laughs> what is Buddha? Because uh, I'm I'm just a heathen, simple Taoist, so I don't know these things. <laughs> well, let's say there's signs of a Buddha. Okay. Because what is a Buddha is one of the four incomprehend you can't comprehend incomprehensibles. Ah, right. Worst questioner ever. But there are signs of a Buddha. Did I choose one of the only four? There are only four, questions. yeah. Genius. It, maybe it's not worded exactly like okay. that, but that's the basic meaning of it. Okay, so what, what are the signs of a Buddha? So one of the signs of a Buddha is that he can fly yeah. and eject fire and water from the pores simultaneously. Seems rather clear. And all Buddhas yeah. demonstrate that in their life. Mm -hmm. So that that's particular that's, preset combination, is it? Yes, that is the well, only the Buddhas, they say, according to Buddhism, yes. according to Buddhist dogma. Yeah. Only the Buddhas, not other enlightened yep, beings, yep. only Buddhas can demonstrate this. Okay. So, that's, if you can't do that, you're not a Buddha. Yep. Now, in modern Buddhism, I can't do that. No. I can't identify as I divine any anymore. There's three. Yes. Let alone all three simultaneously, right? <laughs> it's, it's, that's pretty hardcore. My divine identity has to go, I think. Yeah, it's just not correlating with reality. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah. according to the modern <coughs> Buddhism, like probably the types at the university, mm -hmm. they think being a Buddha is some kind of psychological state. Yeah, that's, what I, that's the discussion I have with people. Which is a yeah. complete demoralization and destruction of mm. Buddhism, in my opinion. And that psychological state would be calm. 
from what I can see. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Take Valium. <laughs> right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm calm or something like that. I yeah, psychologically yeah. don't identify with my personality. So are Buddhists, are, are they, because you're, I, I've spent time in Buddhism, but you've got far more experience than me in that particular world. Do you, why don't they know about, like, aren't these, are these stories? Well, they in, do in the world I'm from. But in the wider communities, I guess, of Buddhism, do they believe these are metaphorical, these stories of the Buddha, like fire and water representing I don't know. Either mental states or something like that? Or I don't know if there's discussion around these things. I've, I've heard and seen in modern yeah. Buddhist books, hmm. people say there's nothing supernatural in Buddhism. I've seen Buddhism that. is purely psychological. I saw one Buddhist teacher write in the foreword, fairly eminent Buddhist, saying that most of Buddhism is superstitious esotericism. Yeah, I mean, it's... That was by a particular Lama. It's quite famous. <laughs> that's sad, and... Yeah. I mean, that's working against the divine, in my opinion. Right, okay. It's part of the Kali Yug. It's like the, the wrong direction. Sure. So I think that's... They should just say that they're just into psychology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to be calm and cool, or they want this kind of, like, go-with-the-flow with personality. Mm -hmm. Fine. But anything to do with spiritual cultivation, yeah. only maybe one very small strata, that's it. Yeah, it, it confuses me a lot because I, I guess like right from a young age, I, I always knew that enlightenment, which I know is an English word, everyone always picks me up and says, I know, but you know what I'm applying yeah. it to, it's just a word. But uh, they always pick me up and used to when I was younger, well, no, I mean, sorry, when I was younger, they used to tell me that's a very difficult thing. Like and it's now everyone's in Exactly. I'm very surprised at how many people I see online that you just go on the video and they say, I have achieved Buddhahood, I am fully awakened, I've achieved enlightenment. It's a lot. There's yeah. a lot. No, they're awesome. I think they're wrong. <laughs> just a, they're a little wrong. <laughs> a little bit wrong. Maybe they'll fly <laughs> over with, with fire and water and tell us, but until then... It'd be a great cameo in the podcast. Yeah, They'd yeah. be welcome to. Yeah, yeah I... I don't understand. I don't get how something gets reduced to something so simple. Is it because we can't, as humans, accept that something might be beyond our capabilities? Well, people reduce Tai Chi to wrestling, and right? Yeah, I mean, I have to accept I'll never be the world-class male model or something right. like that. So reduce like like everything down to that. Yeah, well, they do that yeah. too. Uh, beauty is <laughs> obesity or whatever. Right? Sure, yeah. yeah. It happens in all spheres of life. People mm. drag everything down to their lowest common state. So we drag all those goalposts over yeah. towards us. Which is, I can't understand that. That would be miserable. There'd be no drive in life, nowhere to go, nothing to do. It would be boring. Yeah, I'm sound, already there. That oh. sounds like a lot of people's lives. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound very fun or exciting to me. No. No. I, I think that's partly where the demonization of Siddhi comes from as well, meaning psychic ability, if you don't know the term, right? Uh it's Where, really weird. There's no such demonization in the canon, like in the Pali at all. No, but there are there are past saints, masters that have said don't obsess over them. Sure. Which is a different thing, isn't it? But I think it's become that whole black and white people are either on one camp or they're in the other. It's like you have to obsess over them or you don't do them yeah. at all. Yeah. And I've met certainly with through teaching people who come from both camps and I've heard people say Ah, uh, cities are uh, just irrelevant. My teacher was enlightened and he didn't have cities or something like just such a, which is such an incorrect statement. They even say samadhi. Yes. You don't yeah. even need samadhi, let alone city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's you gone. need nothing. <laughs> but then there's also the other camp that really obsessed over cities. There are a lot of those. There's whole communities online. They just try to cultivate the meaning of themselves. You yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, that's yeah. separate that's, from cultivation. That's obviously a total deviation. Yes. But both camps are a deviation. Yeah, I would say in some ways the anti-city crowd are less likely to get really horrible character defects. I see some terrible character yes. defects in the people hunting the city. Uh, some of the worst characters that I've observed. I just see people not getting very far in the other camp, but some yeah. of the some terrible crowd, the ones that hunt the powers. Yeah. After a while, speaking to them, it, it's... You're meant to hunt the divine, not the powers. Yeah, that's key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the, the no city camp don't hunt the divine either. They hunt the psychological state of peace, right? Mm. And the city camp hunt powers. They're both not on it. It's a joke, isn't it? You only want peace when you're not peaceful. 
Pace is one of the first achievements. Yeah, that's it should become irrelevant to yeah. you. So if you're still constantly talking about achieving peace, achieving peace, the implication was it's equivalent of doing affirmations in the mirror in the morning, which means you're not okay. I am okay, peaceful, I am happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 which you wouldn't be doing if you were peaceful and happy, yeah, right? Yeah. So, it, yeah, so it gets lost in that sort of strata. So what what is the difference between psychology and spirituality? Psychology is of the personality. Mm -hmm. Spirituality has nothing to do with the personality. So how does somebody get from their psychological obsession, state, practice, to spirituality? Through the path of reversal? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That's an easy answer. I think that's a circular answer, isn't it? It is but a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. But yeah, you, you're right. I mean, it can't be a how-to. It makes it kind of hard to answer, but... Yeah. I mean, a difficult question, sorry. There are different ways, I guess. Mm -hmm. You need to realize the divine within, spirit, soul within, mm -hmm. and yeah, identify with it, not in a psychological way, unify with it more and more. And shed the other and go towards that. I would say it's that. The problem is that almost Getting everything... That first that, taste is hard. Mm. Sorry. I, I'd say that the problem is, well, every, almost everything that manifests along the way towards that manifests in your psychology which is a part of the problem do you know what i mean like until well, you rather than an actual unless you direct, get actual unless except for cities yes uh, or, or a direct touch of spirit itself yeah or the divine like i mean everything along that spectrum towards that place is psychological well i think the psychological place. has to be cleaned up mm. definitely i'm not saying it has no yeah value it's just step one yep it's like stretch your body Make your body strong and functional. Get your, be, I usually just say become normal. Yes. Normalize your psychology. Which is almost like doing natural. <laughs> there's yeah. the natural. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's yeah the well, natural. I think the psychology should be natural. Yeah, yeah okay. Stabilized yes. and basic. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, you need to do that. But mildly eccentric, I think. I, I don't think it <laughs> is harmful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not destructive is what I mean. Mm. The psychology can't be destructive. That's what matters. The other quirks don't matter. If they're not destructive, who cares? To self or others, you mean? Just collectively? What's or? the difference? I mean, mm. If you're d destructive to self, you're not going to be able to traverse the path. If you're destructive to others, you're destructive to self. You can't traverse the path. Sure. Okay, yes. I think it's the same. Yeah. Mm. So, again, asking you questions that I, I kind of... I have my own take on it, so I'm just curious on yours. It's difficult because I already kind of know a lot of your yeah. views as well because yeah, we, we spend so much time together, right? So I kind of know your views, but there's, there's mind, self, psychology, whatever, yeah. there, the individual, there he is, so, identifying yeah. as his online avatar gender, and then there is divinity and spirit. Yeah. Here's something in the middle. There's a step right there, which... Uh, becomes one of the most controversial parts, I think, in Eastern arts because so many people are Buddhist. Or have so a... Talking about soul? Or? Talking about soul, yeah. Yeah. I'm unsure whether someone can step from self to spirit without touching soul first. I don't know. Or if you can, if it's very common for that to be the case. But I think, I found that when I talk about spirit... People are more acceptant of it for some reason than if I talk about soul. Oh, that's because they're brought up with Christians and now they have like a problem with Christianity and the word soul. Do you think that's what it is? Yeah. Do you think it's the anti-Christian I do, yeah. Could be that, couldn't it? Because I, I grew up without any religion in a very so, unreligious me, community. So, or totally. Churches were yeah. things you threw eggs at sometimes yeah, yeah. or yeah. something, which now is a little back. It's a terrible yeah. thing to do. But no, it's the same as me. Yeah. So... That, but neither word soul or spirit ever had any particular loading for me. Yeah. But do you think more people do with soul? I do. Right, okay. Yeah. They do. And particularly, uh, everyone, most people, because of the Christian thing, which I find ugly the way they have aversion towards it. But, and me then too. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. Religious aversion is... What could be more ugly? Yeah. What are you, what, what are you averse to, sir? I'm averse to the divine. <laughs> 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 Which is my identity now. <laughs> well, yeah, but often then when you explore, they're not actually, what they're averse to is some 
niche human activity that's been associated with that religion, sure. isn't it? Quite often. So if you can't separate like things, I mean, the choir boys or yeah, something sure. like that. Yeah. Okay, well, if, if that's your measurement, then you have to be averse to everything in life. Because everything is subject to deviance. Yeah. Right. And yeah. everything has been deviated and tainted throughout yes. history, everything. So mm -hmm. it's not a fair way to yeah. divide things. It's not honest. No. No. It's, and, and it's mixed, you know, it's the baby in the bathwater thing. Like you can't separate things. It's no discernment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it's also easy to pick apart like great books of wisdom, like the Bible or, yep. or whatever, or any of the great spiritual texts, because you can find snippets of things that upset modern sensibility yeah, sure and rightly so because they are also reflections of the cultural era they were written in you yeah know? but and they don't is, matter totally and if something's written two thousand years ago we can't expect it to be completely up to date I exactly mean, my granddad wasn't up to date you wouldn't put well my... apparently we're not up to date no that's true we're yeah. not up to date the jury said we're not up to date my granddad you wouldn't put him in a multi-ethnic room yeah there'd be people upset all over the place sure. but but I don't hold it against him. Well, he's dead, so I can't. It's a time of, but he's old. Sign of the times. I mean, they missed. So how can you count two thousand years? They missed the essential point for the frill, you know. <coughs> yes. Which yeah. is not the right way to view things. Yes. And it's destructive to them, mm -hmm. to the individual, to the person, because they miss out on the path. Yeah. Totally. I think it's a great error. So anyway, so that's for, for the Christian thing, right? That's yes. common. And then the Buddhists, for you know, anatta, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> Do you know, like I'm not intelligent enough to debate Buddhists. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem because <laughs> you start, <laughs> you start. They're really good at it. <laughs> they always know the words. Yeah, that's the problem. They know the words, and I don't. And and by the time I try to read something, especially not being within their tradition, I have to go look up the words. It takes so long. I can't really discuss for them, but it does seem to be an aversion to the idea of soul or God. Yeah. Within Buddhism as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely God, isn't it? They're anti that too. Certainly within Buddhists. So what's your take on that? What do you mean within Buddhists? As well, not within Buddhism. Buddhism then? Okay. Well, not within what the Buddha taught. Sure. Which I would call Buddhism what the Buddha taught, and then Buddhists, how they interpret. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, people interpret it that way. It's a major, major schism sort of division. That's quite a, that's quite a major point, you know? It's much easier within you know, Taoism talks about the soul and Taoism talks about uh, gods and, and things and I guess but even then Taoists will say that there's no Taoists don't have a crucifixion yeah. do they? They do actually. What is yeah, it? within a lot of it they have the jade, the jade emperor would be seen as right. a, a, a essentially at least a lower level avatar of the creator. Yeah, so but it's like not the, then it's not the same as no god. They would still talk about it though. Well, they do in Buddhism too. There's heaps of high mm. level. There's heaps of gods. Yeah, all the Hindu gods are in Buddhism, right? Uh, the confusion in Taoism is only because they say Tao is an unidentified thing. But m more to me, the, the term Tao, by the very nature of it, means path, right? So I think that what's missed in, missed in Taoism is sometimes is they're not using Tao to say we don't think there's a God or don't want to speak about God. We're simply saying that that final thing is not as important as the path to get there in the first place. Yeah. So as a tradition, we are the practice and walk along the path tradition that's it and don't worry about the end goal but then within use often that's used as an argument to negate the existence of the end of the path which by the nature of a path paths are linear if i walk along a path i will get to an end point right so yeah. they are discussing something being there the yes. source yeah you know definitely yeah it has to be otherwise it's not a path yeah completely otherwise you just wander around in circles yeah so, so this is what I think is funny. If they don't believe yeah. in these things, why? Buddhists. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, anyone. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not picking on Buddhists by any means. I am. Let, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so let's say you don't believe in spirit or soul or anything that is innately divine and goes on. Yes. Why are you practicing? I don't know. So the answer is they do believe in these things. They just intellectually argue against it they paint on a veneer of anatta belief but yes. what drives them towards practice in the first place what drags them onto the path mm. is the innate connection knowing desire for connection to spirit soul god right otherwise why do you practice if there's nothing to become enlightened to become free to become divine why do you practice there's no answer peace 
Valium. <laughs> Peter Galadas. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't it. If you if so if you take away the idea of divinity and you take away the idea of a uh, say if the definition of soul is something that carries on beyond this life you take away the idea of becoming more than a normal basic human or yeah what's left really like what <laughs> I mean, what, what, what are you doing it for you better off just going to the pub and enjoying yourself my primary buddhist teacher yeah certainly doesn't talk like there's nothing that goes on never like there's nothing what so nothing that goes on right okay yeah he says it's just, I'll translate it as consciousness, but it doesn't really work. But yeah. Consciousness is immortal. It's a fairly clear statement. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But most Buddhists would freak out and hate that. Mm. Nothing's immortal, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. That's what they would say. To, to, to play devil's advocate, even if, as a number of playing devil's advocate, even if that were true, so there is... Nothing is, so there's no soul and consciousness is not infinite and not eternal and it didn't carry on and stuff like that. It almost becomes like the food argument. Like surely that's true at a very, very, very late, late, late stage. Even if that was the case, it would only be later. That's and what for I mean, now, right? you definitely have a self-existence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's like, a, like I, I say, look, you've got to contact your soul. We don't believe in the soul. Okay, well, find the soul first and then negate its existence. Yeah, it's, sure. you, you can't jump straight past that right. to... Eradic just eradicating your existence like well, what I'd yeah that's what happens with the don't do jhana don't do samadhi you'll get attached to jhana you'll right. mistake jhana for enlightenment don't do jhana yeah yeah that's a teaching only by the the modern corruptors of buddhism right? so what do they do well they don't practice i don't know they imagine or whatever i thought that was the basis of buddhism it is right okay if you count buddhism as what the buddha taught right okay yeah. but the modern buddhism yeah a lot of them are like, don't do jhana, jhana is dangerous, or you get attached to it. It's like, well, worry about that when you're attached to it. Uh, it, it How about it, actually getting there first? It is quite alluring. Yeah. I mean, they're right. Yeah. But they can't do it. Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah, there's no point worrying about your addiction to something you don't have. If you've never drunk alcohol, you're not going to be an alcoholic. Or... It, no, it's, it's, okay. it's silly. I mean, you okay. don't know what it is. I've never you're saying... do jhana. Oh, yeah. Okay. Even though the Buddha says for, you know, that because the, these are the people that talk about insight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says there's no insight for those without jhana. Okay. I guess it's similar in alchemy where there is a movement towards um, transforming the teachings around substances, which... Into psychological... Into psychological yeah. qualities, yeah. I've yeah. seen that in the alchemical traditions, yeah. For example, I'm going to reveal your dark secret here on this podcast that I know you actually know a fair amount about alchemical practices, including Taoists and Chinese. A little bit. Practices. No, <laughs> you know more than you. People would be surprised at how much you know, I think. May that be the case with all subjects. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you know, that actually when they're discussing Jing Qi Shen or, or treasures or even uh, things like, um, you know, mercury and gold and lead, all of the metaphorical terms, the reason they use metaphors of fairly tangible substances is because these, the practices, including meditative states, generate changes to physical and literal substances within the body. Absolutely. Everything from magnetic and electrical energies through to hormonal energies, yeah. and which produce substances and chemicals, yeah. physical things, right? And the sub substances are substances. Yeah. Like even not, even not the physical ones. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But they dumb that down to the psychological, right? Yeah. I've seen that, definitely. And some of them are very well written and they're beautiful texts and everything, but it's not the real stuff. Louis Ming's? Perfect example of, yeah. of making it all psychological. Louis Ming is a strange one. Like, I, I do really, I really like his personality. Ah, uh, it's nice. <laughs> it's, I like it all. I really enjoyed the books, He's but they are psychological. He's a guy. He reminds me of a cranky, dry <laughs> Buddhist. Yeah, totally. <laughs> exactly, Buddhist. It's more like reading a Buddhist view on Taoism. Yeah. Which, but not even the proper Buddhism. It's, it's more like a modern that. version. Yeah. But it's heresy to say that. Yeah. Heresy well, to say it, that. It's obvious. Because right? Louis Ming is a saint, right? And but uh, yeah, it's a funny thing. Mm. But I, there's whole there's whole alchemical mm. schools, Chinese alchemical schools, based upon saying that these substances are metaphors purely. Well, then for it's not alchemy. States. I agree yeah. completely. What is it? And. 
It's psychology. I have critics who take <laughs> apart my view and say, well, no, I tried to study with the real alchemical person. I knew because he had a little square hat and a blue outfit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I could tell he was real. And uh, mm. they'll actually critique what I'm saying and say, no, actually, these are all psychological states. And it's very similar to what's happened with Buddhism, it's where the they've turned it into psychology. Because it's the times. The time of mind. Mind obsession. That's depressing, isn't it? It's unfortunate. I mean, <laughs> the parts get lost, don't they? They get destroyed, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I mean, on the other hand, Taoism suffered a little bit of the other opposite, where their schools are overfocused on substances. Absolutely, to the point of too much focus on the physical is definitely a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like the city. You know, the city is a reflection of what you've achieved with yeah. your consciousness or whatever. The energetic accumulation or whatever is, or chemical accumulation, is a byproduct of what you've achieved with your practice, right? Yeah. Should be. Yeah. Yes. A result. <laughs> a result. A measurement. Well, you need something tangible. Well, you need something that's not just a fleeting aspect of mind, which is what the psychology is, right? Yes. On top of that, it's always great if something actually improves your physical functioning as well. That's an added bonus. I mean, I, I always think the good thing about alchemy is you do your meditative practice, and then afterwards you get to step outside and go... I can enjoy life more just because my body functions to a life. higher degree. Yeah. yeah, and it might, and you might. Some people of of the sort of body is trash kind of mindset. I think or, it's a mistake. Yeah. yeah, me too. What are you going to do? Live in this? Just create more dukkha. I'm all about <laughs> having detachment from body sensation. Yeah. Okay. Freedom from it, yes. so you can train hard, go hard, and not like bitch out about life, right? <laughs> yes. But that's not the same as body has no value. Body is trash. It's not the same thing at all. Yeah. Sure. I mean, in the canon, the Buddha says, the entire path is found in this body. Mm -hmm. Every single aspect is within the body. And he says, if you must identify, identify with the body, not the mind. Really? Yeah. If you must identify, a body with the, identify with the body and not the mind? I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah. At least the body lasts 80 years, the mind doesn't even last one second. Yeah, okay. It's just a changing... And yet, I guess the extreme of that is you might... It's a question, isn't it? Do we live in an age where people identify with the body, with a kind of physical narcissism, or do they identify with the mind and its attraction to that form or whatever, you know? People are, we, are, we are in an age where people identify with their psychology, yeah, their mind. Yeah. Definitely. I feel like, therefore, I am, is a good example. Sure. It's like, uh, even when I've mentioned, like, Stoic as a quality that I think is a necessary positive. quality. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's a virtue to at least have the option to be stoic if you choose to. It's not always the best option at all times. But, but it's, it's a skill. Yeah, it's something you have to. But when I've said that, there's almost like a bulking against it from spiritual practitioners. Like stoicism is like a negative trait because I it don't shows get it. repression of your emotions or yeah. disconnection from how you feel. Or yeah, or I mean like it's that, you know, it's the opposite of. Yeah, the path, right? Mm -hmm. People have fallen into the opposite way for everything. I've never met a really high-level cultivator, like supreme high-level, who isn't incredibly tough and able to completely discount what they're feeling if they need to. If it would, it, you and you never will. No, <laughs> because it's causal. Yes. How are you going to get there to do this impossible feat? Yeah. And this strenuous path hour in, hour out, year after year, if you're not stoic. It's impossible. It's going to be tricky, because there's going to be a lot of things that arise. It's impossible. Yeah. So, of course, that's going to be in their character. Yes. So do you think that cultivation, you know, like personal cultivation, is a selfish thing to do? And if... Okay, I just let you answer that first. What do you think on that? Because I've struggled with that in the past. The, the most selfless person I've ever met mm -hmm. is a cultivator. <laughs> I guess that's the counter. Uh, what if you didn't get to that level, but you spent lots of time cultivating? Probably. Yeah, okay, yeah. But compared to what? Everyone else living a self selfish life that never gets anywhere. Mm. So, yes, I think you need it's kind of selfish. But the outcome is selfless and vast mm. and immeasurable. So, uh, maybe for a while. 
You have to walk away from a lot of things sometimes. Is that selfish? Other people might say so. Whatever you do, other people are going to criticize you. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. around with me. If you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess so. It's, I, I've known people that early on in their path, even people I've taught to whatever level I, level I can help them with, you know, that have that same concern. Is this selfish to, to what? spend all this time? I guess that's the counter answer, isn't it? Compared to what? Yeah, so from, in my opinion, most people make these statements about mm. ideas. Yeah. Just to ask them, compared to what? Yeah. What are you talking about, compared to what? So do you think the pressure of this being selfish is often coming from maybe other people that don't like you? Do, it's like if any, one person raises their head up and everyone claws and drags them back down. Or well, something that's or a massive cultural problem in all huge. over the world. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but you know what, compared to going to the pub at night? Yeah. Yeah, or I guess it's less selfish to spend that cultivation time sitting with your partner watching TV or something like that. That's more sharing. Or Okay, it might be more sharing, but I would guarantee that if you achieve anything cultivation, the benefit to your partner will be yeah, manifold, yeah. right? Many times more. And yep. to your family and even to your family who have already passed. Yeah. So, <laughs> There's there's entering into another realm of it. That's I mean that's part of the yeah that's true, the burning of sort of family karma or something. Yeah, else. for sure. Mm. So I think it's selfless. Now, yes, you focus on yourself, but the outcome is of benefit to many, right? So what do you think is the difference? Just to fire some questions at you, what do you think the difference is between what I've seen people that go into this path and become move towards selflessness and mm -hmm. become a better benefit to their Right, community. I'm not going to say society. Cause no, because actually, it's broad. Yeah, community. Two I'm actually, people around. I'm anti-society. I'm pro-community as a, as a rule within me. But uh, I've seen other people go into this path and just become increasingly narcissistic, power-hungry, and self-centered. They're not on the path. What, what, what's the difference? What do you They're think? probably chasing the cities. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true, actually. <clears throat> I think you're right. The, one, the ones, yeah... Yeah, you're right. It's when I've had either people I've taught, I, I guess, or people that I've met from peers and things that are very power hungry and have that kind of ego that want to be worshipped or something. Yes. Yeah, I generally find they're fascinated with the cities and they make all kinds of excuses for it, but that's what they go for. Yeah. The idea of connection to something bigger than themselves is less attractive. Yeah, I think that's really strange. I guess that's being totally removed from the divinity within. Yeah. Which most people are, so big deal. But uh, if there's any connection, then the, the draw to that which is bigger than yourself is going to be become larger in your life and eventually yes. overwhelming. So if you only want to sort of press down on people and be the man and everything, yep. I guess there's just no connection there yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know... There isn't for most people. I mean, it just they just happen to be pretending on this path instead of playing football or something. Like it's not like everyone that does esoterica is spiritual. Not at all. No. Not but, even close. And sometimes it's hard to pick that up. Well, it takes experience and yeah. time, I guess. Yeah. To get to know someone. I, I've yeah, to get to know someone over time, right? Yeah. Over time, unless you're like super attained or something. But for people like me, I mean, you have to spend time. As you know, sometimes on occasion, my teacher has literally told me that person you're teaching on this event, dressed in blue, stood over yeah. there, stopped teaching them. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. What do I, yes. Yeah, well, you have to follow the instruction, but it puts me in a very difficult position because yeah, then awkward. I have to go over and I'm saying, I'm really sorry, you have to go. Yeah. And they're like, why? Um. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it doesn't matter. You just have to leave. Like it, it's it's one of the more unpleasant parts of yeah. this kind of path that that there is a kind of filtering thing that has to go through people as yeah. they go through these arts, right? Um, so I mean, I can't discern at that level. So no. So I mean, there are some people who I can tell straight away that I, they that, I can do it by haircuts. It time. Haircuts. Well, we, we're safe with yeah, each other. Right. <laughs> Honestly, man, sometimes someone comes in with that haircut, I can tell. It's the Hitler haircut. <laughs> you have to get rid of that one. But yeah, sorry, you were saying. It just takes time around people, doesn't it? To really know someone. Like, someone mm. might be rough exterior. Yeah. You might think, oh, this guy's self-centered. He's rough. He's this. 
but actually everything they're doing is to be benefit others. You don't know. It, it takes time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, made, made, I've made that mis mistake quite badly with some seniors. It happens. Where I trusted them and it turns out I Not just you. got it wrong. Yeah, me too. It's difficult. You, you know, you learn from getting burned and you learn to see patterns. And I mean, that's how intelligence evolves, right? Yeah, sure. And sometimes I get smacked in the face for reminding you don't have that intelligence. Yet. That's what it needs to involve from seeing the pattern oh. many times. Oh, I did something <laughs> stupid again. I was blind. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's easy to do that, especially when you want to see the, the yeah. best in people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's nothing worse than looking at someone and just thinking bad things about them. And No. And I think many people live like that. And It'd be a sad place to be because it'd make you feel bitter and miserable inside. Yeah. Yeah. So after all, you have to try and spot the good in people, but then the fuckers... Shape, like surprise you <laughs> in, a, in a bad way unfortunately i have definitely been burned by seeing the good in people when i really should have yeah, yeah a yeah. number of times mm -hmm. but i still would rather do it like that and I'll do it like that next time I'm sure. until i can see yeah. with the divine eye it will be that. yeah yeah you have to trust and it's not for them i don't do it for them yeah because it'd be a miserable place to be to not it's like being paranoid and weird, not having trust. I mean, I sort of yeah. innately trust people too much. Yes. But it, if you're not going to function like that, I think you're going to be unhappy. Yeah, I think that's true. There's, there's also that line in the, uh, one of the lines in the Tao Te Ching as well, which again, paraphrase horribly, but is that you essentially should always sustain a way of being, but you shouldn't expect it in anybody else. Yeah, and like, totally. you know, and that I don't know why you know, like when you read a line, you it was like, uh, oh right, okay. Yeah. So actually, I shouldn't project what I expect yeah. onto other people with regards to their behaviors. But so if you do, you're never going to be satisfied. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So in the practice in arts, try to draw this discussion towards some kind of conclusion. Since we're kind of looking at cultivation as well as riffing on a few other topics. There's, obvious, there's often that distinction between the, uh, sorry, top down and bottom up. I always get that wrong. Bottom down wouldn't be good with it. Neither would top up. But <laughs> bottom top down is, is the current situation. <laughs> yeah, of that life. would be great with it. The bottom down method. <laughs> Actually, I could, I could probably name quite a few of those. But yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You spoke the bottom up system, meaning that essentially the work is largely done in the body with substances should have been like alchemy or something yeah. like that and then um somatic experience i suppose building of energy often lower dantian or lower center first and beginning and then building up towards connection with spirit and yeah. whether that's i mean well i have come to the conclusion is literally up actually like there was yeah. a while i thought it was metaphorically yeah. up but it is actually literally up isn't it directions are a major part of this and then you have the opposite which is a top down system which is often based upon transforming of consciousness mm -hmm. and allowing that to trickle down like a pachinko machine into the body to transform the physicality. It's Buddhism versus Taoism. With the exceptions of Tantric Buddhism and consciousness-based Taoism. Yeah, the general sure, yeah, okay. trend. The way we understand um, it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. What, do you, what do you think on the... I think they both have pros and cons. That's my view. I think there's positives and negatives. I don't agree with that view that both can't be done at the same time. No, I think they can definitely. Yeah. Or even need to be almost. Hey man, you put them both together, what do you get? You yeah. get the, uh, what's that hippie shape called? What's that called? The Star of David like that or? Yeah, that hippie shape, the Star of David. <laughs> it's got another name, it's this that, but. Uh, Pentagram? It'll come back to me in a minute. I don't know, yeah, hippie shape. Anyway, that's symbol of the two triangles coming together. I, I think they, um, uh, I mean, I, I think they're a great adjunct. I think they can assist each other. I and think I, that's the best way for most people. I think so. I, that's my personal way of working. I think often the top-down, sorry, the bottom-up systems will say you can't do top-down because they misunderstand, and they think it means energy coming from above and energy coming from below as if they're going to counter each well, other out. As you know, I've been a top-down person most of my yes. practice life, yeah, in this yeah, life. Yeah. But um, I'm integrating more and more bottom-up stuff, and like it's, I think you need to do both. A Merkaba. I've never heard that word. That's because you're not in the hippie it's circle. It's because I don't live in Glastonbury. Yeah, <laughs> a Merkaba is a, a two pyramids 
it's a star of David. Up. It's a three D <laughs> star of David for hippies. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Yes. I mean, so I've worked top down mainly, as you know. Yep. And I would say, from my experience, very few get anywhere from top down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. I think it's a low success rate because of the lack of tangible feedback from consciousness. Like or okay, yeah, it's harder to grasp. Yeah, okay. and the lower things will screw you up. Yeah, there's a lot more temptation in the yeah. If bottom you don't up. correct it, the, the yeah, lower yeah, stuff, yeah. and so. There's that, but at the same time, I've done other body up work like Tai Chi and stuff like that. Yes. And, you know, more and more different methods. And I think both is the best. I would say if, you, if they couldn't be unified, which I think they could be, yeah. Top down would achieve more enlightened masters. Yeah. Meaning, let's say, three out of 100. It's not really that many, but it's giving us yeah, because that's, that's very hopeful for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's more like <laughs> point zero 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 zero. If I had to say the real yeah. number, so, okay. So let's say three out of a hundred they yeah. get it. Yes. And the other ninety-seven out of a hundred get nothing. Yeah. Bottom up achieve less enlightened masters. Yeah. Two out of a hundred. Yeah. But ten of them get quite a bit. Yeah. So it's something like yeah, that because yeah, yeah. you're building up. You get somewhere. Maybe you don't make it. Yes. Top down, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. Bang, you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like going for broke if you do a top-down system. I think it is, yeah. But it's funny because I think more people do a top-down system. They might not use that term, but I think that shit, or at least I in the Western I think it's world, true. I think that they, yeah, I think that they don't really, but yes, I agree. Yes. They pretend they do the wrong version of a top-down system. Sure, okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because all spirituality is like that. And I spent more of my life in a bottom-up yeah. yep. system. Yeah. And I would say that's definitely true. Even looking at my own path, there were, even quite early on, attainments that was like, okay, this is cool. This is physically good, control of this, that, and the other. But then, yeah, glass ceilinged. Yeah. And those glass ceilings can only be smashed through, I guess, using something from above, you know, like top down. And well, the, the other triangle piercing down, right? The Merkaba. <laughs> Which, yeah, I, sir. which I've even heard is a vehicle for aliens under the pyramids or something oh, like, like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It gets really, really cosmic. So I'll send, I mean, I'll send you a video. Yeah, I think it's something like that. <laughs> I, I, I usually say just burn the incense from both ends. You'll get done quicker. One end's a stick. So <laughs> Chop yeah. it off. <laughs> okay, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. And I, it's funny that I, I think people often have a leaning towards one or the other, isn't it? Like the Natural inclination, yeah. Yeah, and I see the, and I think the inclination's wrong. They should do the opposite of your inclination. <laughs> yes, I think so. Yeah, but who does? Well, I make them. Like, if I, if I have a room full of people, you always get the same. If you, if you ever ask, which you should never do when you teach, but sometimes I make the mistake of saying, what do you want to do? Do you want to do some seated practice or some standing work? It's an even divide. Some people prefer... The, <laughs> yeah, totally. Some people want, oh, let's work with the energies, and other people want to work with trying to sort of penetrate through to the center of an object. I haven't seen sitting or standing as a metaphor, obviously, you can do yeah, either yeah, one sure. either, but... Yeah, and I can always see those tendencies. No, I agree, and I make them do the opposite of what they want to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Against the grain. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't even know if it's because you can already do one. I think it's because you're just more comfortable trying to do one. For me, I've always been more top mental kind of person, yeah. not a physical person. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and I've done a lot of the, the Kung Fu and everything made me more physical, you know? Sure, sure, sure. I was always kind of, you know, disassociated and off right, mentally, okay. yeah. yes. not so embodied. So right. it was really healthy for me to do all this, the body stuff and, and the energy work, you know, it, it works well for me, brings things down. Sure. Yeah. And I guess the opposite for me, I was always quite ADHD, hyperactive, yeah, so still am, so move sit my body still, around. Were, yeah, which was that. the instruction, yeah. forcing me to do sitting work which was seated work and still work which was really really hard for me at the mm. beginning it was like a it was a grind but it was the right medicine. yeah 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 then eventually got to the stage where i would say my seated practice is not that bad actually I, no, it's I, good. still work yeah. is okay you know yeah. but it was definitely not my inclination i'd rather kick punch and smash my way through to divinity if i could but it's yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the problem, another problem with top-down stuff is like, 
Now, I don't think this is true, but generally people can't judge the meditation of another. I think you can. But most mm -hmm. people, yeah. they just take their word for it. Yeah, sure. It's yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh, this guy sounds wise. I he uses nice words. Sorry? I have achieved Buddhahood. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I actually think that there's stuff that radiates out of someone when they've achieved meditation, yeah. and it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. So there's substance. We'll come back to that, but yeah, carry on. So, I mean, all I mean is one of the problems with the top down is this difficulty in uh, measuring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even measuring who you're going to listen to. Yeah, if they've got a nice voice and a good outfit. Well, that's most, right? Most spiritual teachers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why I realized I'd never be a spiritual teacher. That's why I had to teach mechanics, because I don't have a nice enough voice. That, I realized <laughs> I couldn't do it. I can't do the. If I try and fake it now, I can't do it. The leading you in to the meditative stage. Boy, I can't do it. Ding. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I can't do it. So you have to teach from a mechanical. Oh, hello. A mechanical perspective <laughs> as much as Reach I can. the methods, that's the stuff. Trying to seek spiritual arts from a mechanical perspective is, is a difficult thing, but yeah. But yeah, I think that's one of the problems, you know. He told me he's got good yeah. meditation. Until mm. you've got enough experience and you know the juice coming out of someone. Not that I think you need experience, it's over. It's obvious. But it should be. I it guess be maybe it isn't. Right? Uh, I mean, I don't mean for the great mouth, I mean just somebody that's that jhana or whatever, that's got good meditation. Yeah. You can tell it changes them forever. And somebody, somebody that has that experience of jhana, even if it's not overbearing, I think sometimes when you're just in their presence for a length of time or in a space with them, even, uh, yeah, you feel it permeates yeah. into you, and it yeah. kind of it's disorientating and yep. things like that. That's what I would expect. Whereas someone who's like a full master yeah. of whatever method, it's like it, well, then it's know, overwhelming. It's like being in another worldly yeah. space, right? Yeah. And it even generates chemical reactions in your body sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. And tastes Definitely. and the, the smells, yep. the, the, what do you call it, the rose smell? Yeah, there's the divine kind of smells stuff, and taste. Which I can and... smell right now. <laughs> That's uh, the trick, you just have all the flowers <laughs> under your throat. I'm identifying divine and I'm carrying uh, frangipani, is it? Frangipani yeah. and something frangipani else. Or yeah. something I said, yeah. I don't know what that one is. Yeah. It does smell a bit like that actually, sometimes the, the divine. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, those kind of experiences I think are, uh, I think they should be spoken about more. And that does, I don't even think that means you shouldn't go to somebody else for meditation. I don't no. think there's any, if someone does a Wednesday night meditation Well, maybe class, they're teaching a good method and that's enough. Yeah, completely. And I think, I started like that. The first, they told me you've got to learn to meditate because you're an arsehole. Right, okay. So they said it better than that. So I went to learn to uh, meditate. And it, it was literally a Wednesday night in my local community center. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't know what I was doing, learning how to, put my legs in the right place and how to breathe out. It, it was vital. Yeah. yeah, it was vital. So, you know, I, I don't ever want to come across as one of those people who says you shouldn't train with anyone unless they're a complete master. I know. I mean, then there'll be <laughs> not many people to train with. Yeah, you, you train with who's useful to you at that time yeah, yeah. And, and things like that. But but if you're really serious, then at some point those, like... that's If I said that, yeah. I'd have to, like, uh, scare all my students off and stop training with me, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, isn't yeah. it? What are you going to yeah. do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you shouldn't fall for thinking someone is a complete divine master if it doesn't have that overbearing yeah. kind of quality around it. Because as you know, that, that, that's that been dangerous historically yeah. within some of the traditions. Yep. And, yep. and that's people start giving up their power, which it's a controversial one or a difficult one. Because I always tell students, don't give over your power. Don't give your power to me. Definitely not. Like That's the last thing I want. I don't. I, I shirk responsibility to the best of my ability, so I never want anybody's power I handed agree, over. Absolutely, but if a divine master tells me what to do, I say yes. That's what I mean. That's so a that's, contradiction. Yeah. I've completely handed over my power. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the difference is, I'm. Um, I think. I hope I'm not wrong, but I, I think I have the discernment in order yeah. to ascertain that this is the right person yeah, to, that's it. To, to do it to. That's it. But it feels like a lot of people are just trying to hand over the power to the postman, if they it can. Like, they just want yeah. to hand it over so they don't feel bad about their life. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Personal responsibility. <laughs> it's too much weight. Get rid of it, right? Oh, the amount of people I've been in, they go, like, come to this great, great master, and I go with them, and it's like... Nothing like, there. I mean, they're, 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 they're sometimes all right. You know, like, I would say maybe they're the level of that 
Wednesday night community center meditation yeah. teacher and it's okay to go to them. But yeah, I think my definition of master might be a little different. It's from, a little higher than that. Yeah. 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 But I guess it's all comparative to what you've seen. I mean, and the right thing at the right time and all that. It's, it's okay. Yeah. But like you say, they should be talked about a little bit at least. So people know that there is something more than that. It's not yeah. just psychological. Yeah, 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 there is something that's <laughs> was real. That, thing, that was that thing in the internal arts. I don't want to say who said it, but I do know who said it originally. But it was from a, do you remember the Fighting Arts magazine? Did you get that in Australia or yeah. Thailand or wherever you live in? No, maybe not. It was like a, was it English or American? There were a bunch of magazines. I was never involved with that. Yeah, either. Fighting Arts was like in the 80s and 90s, the magazine, pre-internet, you know, when things were still interesting to hunt out rather than yeah. you could go on some Facebook yeah. forum and see 50 dickheads arguing about it. But you, you get the magazine with articles. And it was quite exciting every month. Who's written this? And it yeah. had Chinese artists, Japanese artists. And there was one in there who's still quite famous these days who said, it's not possible to prove anything within the internal arts because it's all inside. And that statement, honestly, it's stuck around for ages. And I remember reading it, probably a t young teenager going, well, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, that's, that's bollocks. That means I could just take the guy sat next you just to me on the, on the bus and go, he could say, well, I'm internal master. We can't see it's all inside. Uh, uh, but that phrase hung around, and I didn't think it would, uh, but I saw it repeated. That's, that's a really dark, like, because it's a doorway for abuse. Well, it's darker than my take on it, but it, I agree. Well, it means yeah. you can totally lie. Yes. Right? Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why I'm well hated, of which there are many reasons, one is that early on. I don't on, know if you're hated. I think it's a secret, unrequited love <laughs> that they're struggling with. Universal love. <laughs> they're struggling with. They're struggling with it. They can't deal with these feelings, you know. So <laughs> it comes up as self loathing. It's the pink shirt. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. So early on in the sort of interaction online. Yes. I said something like, like if you can't fire Jin. Yes. You don't, you, you know, you. You can't mobilize the chi. You're not doing the internal. I remember you writing that, yes. And Fajin's not a big deal. It just, but it's a measurement to mean you can mobilize chi. Yeah. You can do internal. Yes. So I was like drawing a line in a way. Maybe that wasn't very wise. It wasn't very subtle. No, I'm not the subtlest guy. I think so. But this is the opposite of you can't show anything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's the opposite of that. You must be able to show. Mm -hmm. I agree. Show me. I think the only reason you come across as unsubtle is sometimes you use 10 words, whereas I'll say the same thing, but I'll say 100 words. Yeah, people like all the body around it and everything. Yeah, and I'll, I'll try to head off all of the upsets people <laughs> will get before you get to the same one. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It is the opposite. I, I, didn't, I guess I didn't really see that it's open to abuse. I suppose that's true, isn't it? It could be a path to that, certainly, with, especially with regards to mental, like yeah. Buddha qualities and yeah. things. My, my take on it more was it just suited people. Of course, it's suitable, but you read but they that don't have like, any. Exactly. You know, it's like, oh, yes, you're right. They can't see my skill. That I is abuse. I don't always skill. mean abusing another person. It's still abuse sure. of truth. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it does lead to abuse of people as it well, does. right? It does, yeah. I have quite a lot of students who, um, or people who, yeah, I don't even agree. I don't even believe anyone ever has students. I think you just have people who come to learn off you for a while. That's it. And it's just whatever. semantics. Yeah. It's semantics. But it, I think I think that words almost become a bit loaded these days, a little bit like you own them or something. But I, I think people coming out and, and chatting with students about their experiences. There's a lot of them that have, quite a number of them, been to people because that person has told them that they had some ability that was never demonstrated right. or told them that they were connected to Buddha or... Right. One person actually trained under someone who said there was a second coming of Christ, for example, and they believe them because it's all internal. Now, I would assume they believe them because they said it, yes, <laughs> well, because they have trust, yeah, but they didn't show anything, so they just said it. Well, that's what I mean. If, if someone is the second coming of Christ, I you wouldn't lie, <laughs> I, would lie. I would also expect to be slightly disorientated by that meeting. I would, it, well, my I would expectations expect be, would be kind of high. Yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second coming of Christ, and I didn't notice him as he walked past you. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a lot of that that's gone on, and I mean, there's even books and videos written by, you know, not only people saying they've achieved Buddhahood, but talking about how they've helped other people achieve Buddhahood. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a joke. Yeah, is it deliberate ignorance or is it an accidental misunderstanding? I don't know. 
No, I don't know either. I like to think it's an accidental misunderstanding. I don't pretend to understand their uh, reasoning. No. Not even slightly. Not understanding the reasons why others think and act how they do is, is my primary experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. My take on my skill level is still a dickhead, but less of a dickhead than yesterday. That's kind of... Uh, that's how I see myself, and it's a, it's a long way before claiming to be Buddha. But if I ever can levitate and shoot fire and water out of my paws, I'll demonstrate it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, it would be, yeah, totally. It's a, I tell everybody now, if ever you're unsure if I'm a Buddha or not, <laughs> I, just wait. <laughs> wait, I'll get there. Hold my beer. I'll Kilmer do the demonstration. Yeah, totally. Yeah, film it or it didn't happen. I hate that phrase. Uh, but yeah, like, pfft. ah, it's, it's, it's crappy, isn't it, that all those things I read that greatly inspired me as a youth, all of the, the stories mm -hmm. about the, the mortals and the saints and the people who just casually jumped over a building or whatever like that, all reduced to psychology or... Well, well luckily we know that that's not the case. But I, for most yeah. people it is. Yeah. I didn't know that for a long time, so I was operating on faith. Yeah. And then to have that faith replaced Well, the faith was the there, and that's yeah. why you end up knowing it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, thank God. Thank God it's real. Yeah. Thank God all this stuff is real. Oh, yeah. Literally. What else would you do? <laughs> yeah, thank God. But what, would, what, would you, what else would you do? Like, what else do you do in life? Yeah, I don't know. What would you do if you didn't do cultivation arts? It's probably not an answer I should put on the internet. <laughs> you can't be incriminated for something you're not doing, but yeah. Uh, I don't own a bar. I think I'll be a bar owner, so it's probably better I do this. You can own a bar and do cultivation. Yeah, but then you know the occasional cocktail becomes third, like ten a day, or a distant know, like, bar owner. <laughs> distant bar owner, yeah, from a distance. Silent investor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally, something like that. Yeah, I don't know what you what you do. It's like when people ask why you train. I don't. Well, like, what, why do you play golf? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't know what else I would do, really. I wouldn't be satisfied with anything else. I'm not satisfied with this. No. Which is a part of it. It's like a yeah. hunger, you know? Yeah. But, but I mean, I mean, practice is, I mean, fun. <laughs> I don't know, but that's the word I would use. Something just swam across there. Okay. Yeah. Something like fun. Yes. You, what, it makes you want to go back to do it again the next day. Is that what fun is? I don't know. That's why I said this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw this to a conclusion with a, a question of a, on a, a word I've heard you use in our conversations, and it took me a while to actually get what you meant by it, was you talk about grace. And grace, not, not the quality of like graceful or something, but you, well, I guess graceful, full of grace, but... I mean, like grace. an actual attainment, an actual, I don't want to say experience, because that belittles it a bit. Do you know what I mean? But what yeah. would you call it? Like, well, maybe you could describe what you mean to be by grace. What is grace? What is grace? <laughs> Why are you grace? <laughs> yes. uh, grace, grace, okay. The way I think about it is something like, You train and you practice and you cultivate and you purify your character and you okay. walk the path of reversal to the best of your ability as a crappy little human being. Mm -hmm. And you're pushing up towards the divine. Okay. Failingly. And you stoically, <laughs> with okay. stoic effort, effort enough to move the divine. Right. Okay, yeah. And yeah. then they're like, okay, bang. Mm. And they shower grace upon you, and you become awakened, you, you transform, you realize the divine, you embody the divine. It, yeah. The so Holy Spirit, the Shakti, grace. So it's almost like your practice you. is preparing you and also... It's preparing you and driving up yourself. towards... To, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, I think it's mm. that. And it, maybe there's other ways to get it, like through pure love, like the bhaktis, 
I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of a cultivator, cultivation meaning doing like inner work and stuff. And yeah. I think it's that. Right. That's how okay. it works. And when the grace comes, then you, you are one of the immortals, the Buddhas, or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So it's not a very common thing. I would extremely say. rare. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe it's akin to you know how it's explained to me that you turn your body into a temple that is attractive enough for spirit to come and reside within. I'd say that's exactly the same meaning. Mm. Yeah, maybe a little more poetic than my version. I but, don't know, Grace. But yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, the, the thing I don't like about the temple idea is like it's just pure or something. Sure. Okay. It's not just purity, right? It's not enough. Sure. It's, it's all Some temples are shitty. You've been to Monkey Palace? <laughs> you want an awesome temple that reaches right <laughs> up, right? Sure, yeah. So, yeah, I think grace is the result of the path. Okay, sure, yeah. If you make it. Mm. That kind of that sums up really where we started was what is cultivation. So some people really taking something like Tai Chi. It's easy to use as an example than <laughs> Qigong, perhaps. Uh, some people would focus on Tai Chi being the best way to defeat a hundred opponents within a ring, but it's also possible to use Tai Chi as a way to oh, it's to drive up towards grace. grace. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I would have quit long ago. Honestly, long ago. Yes, it's all of the different methods are for that one purpose. I believe. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that's a good point to conclude it on. Cool. Well. I hope you achieve grace. <laughs> Likewise, maybe we achieve <laughs> it together. <laughs> maybe I'm too much of a schmuck, but I'm enjoying the process on the way there. Uh, thanks very much. I think we should. Uh, I think we should chill out now. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers.